everyone! Welcome back to another long play with commentary. The world of Clovervale has been coming out amazingly. And the last time we were here, we built up this beautiful animal barn and farmland to house all of our cows and sheep and get lots and lots of crops. This has been so helpful in having a supply of food and leather and wool for all of our decorative needs in this world. But as you can see from my hotbar, my tools have taken a beating. I'm already on my third diamond pickaxe of this world and it's only episode three. And we can go through a lot less pickaxes if we get some enchanted tools. So that's what we're gonna be doing today, building up an enchanter's library. Now between episodes, I've been pretty busy in this world. As you can see, all of the crops are at varying stages of growth because I've been harvesting them when they're all done. I even made some hamburgers over on a live stream here on YouTube. But decorating my house, which I will show you in a moment, and making hamburgers has not been the only thing we've been up to. In our first live stream in this world here on YouTube, we found a skeleton spawner across the lake. And since then, we have turned that spawner into an XP farm, and we can use this elevator to go up and down very easily. Now, it was Valentine's Day, so obviously it's very Valentine themed in here. But we have a little place to sit and enjoy, you know, a cake with a kitchen. We added so many cute decorations in this room, like some plushies. And yeah, we also have been getting a lot of hats, as you can see from the chest. And I even got this hat that I'm wearing right now from there. We also have 50 levels already. So we have a ton of levels as long as we don't die today before we can enchant to work with once the enchanting setup is built. And the skeletons are, fall down, they're all one hit kills, and then everything goes into this iron barrel down here where we get hats and bones and everything else basically. Now if we're talking about location for our library today, I think it makes the most sense to just build it right here as we can just move the elevator block up or to wherever we need to move it to. And yeah, then we can easily go up and down, grab XP, and then enchant. While we're passing it here, I think it'll probably be smart if we get all of our sugar cane because we're gonna need a lot of it to make bookshelves. And I wanna grab our flax as well because this is actually a good supply of string as you can just turn the flax into string. And the string we need for a lot of decorative blocks from the cluttered mod, but also for upgrading our backpack and upgrading our chests and all that kind of stuff later on. Plus, it's never a bad idea to have some string laying around in case you wanna, you know, stop bamboo from growing or sugarcane or what have you. And I'm very happy with the amount of sugarcane that we're grabbing, although I, let me just check the water because I always get nervous that I'm dropping some in the water. And yeah, we have just over a stack. Now I've done some work over here on the starter house as well that I wanna show you very quickly, but we're gonna go downstairs before we go upstairs as there's a little bit of an update in our storage area. And that update starts, well, right over here as I've sort of made a little villager kind of breeder area. And basically how this works is that this guy is a farmer and he farms carrots, which gets hoppered into this block here, which is a breeder. And once these two guys have enough carrots, they will make a baby. The babies get hoppered out into this incubator and then they basically grow up in there. And then when they're done, they get hoppered out into a barrel. And that felt really weird to explain out loud in my brain, I just don't think about that, but I just wanted a couple of extra villagers as we have a few over here, but not that many. And I think it would just be a little bit easier if we could get some, you know, enchanted books like mending and bricks and stuff a little bit easier. And it's always a good idea to have a supply of emeralds for the wandering trader as well. So having a little bit of villager action will definitely help us. Anyways, going upstairs, we also decorated the upstairs of our house. And this is sort of how it came out. We have like a little kitchen here with our skillet for Farmer's Delight and a cooking pot. We can just swap those out when we need to. We have some salt and pepper here because we gotta stay seasoned on our food. But these are the only seasonings that they have in this mod pack. Um, If I could have a whole spice rack, I would, I promise. Anyways, we made some popcorn and we have some bread up here. And then we also have some cat mugs and just some other decorations like jam jars and plants. And all of these little cabinets you can store stuff in, which is great if you wanted to store extra food. And then of course we have a little, little bedroom area. This cat is the guy who's supposed to be paying the bills for this place, but it looks like they're piling up. So maybe you could just kind of do that really quick, you know, just do that, just pay the bills. 
I'll let him figure that out, but there's some storage up here and some plants and decorations and stuff. And this is sort of the vibe that I want to bring into all the other buildings here in Clovervale. For today's build, I want to switch up the wall palette and not use oak. So that way we have some variation in what we have going on here. And where is my diorite? That's not diorite. We have one. How do I just have one diorite? That's not going to be enough. All right, let me grab some tools. So let's put away these diamond pickaxes. We can grab that other pickaxe. And do I want these ones? No, I think I'm just going to make some new ones. We could make diamond ones, but we'll do that later once we're going to enchant. Oh, also, by the way, I added some botany pots to my world. And right now I have them growing some spore blossoms. So that way we have a renewable source of spore blossom. And the other one I have growing some moss because there's not a ton of moss left down in the lush cave below my base. Although now that we have a supply of bone meal, we don't have to use it that much, but I am going to let it grow while we're in the area. I definitely don't want to overuse these as they can be a little bit overpowered, but for things like spore blossoms, I definitely think it's the right way to go. All right, so let's just use our, oh my gosh, my backpack's uh, kind of messy. I'm so sorry. I forgot to clean it out. Oh, there's even more stuff in the crafting bench. Uh, we're just going to ignore that for now. And we're going to make up two new pickaxes because I'm going to have to mine diorite and calcite. And then let's get an axe and a shovel as well. And now we'll be set on some tools. That way we can go exploring and not have to worry about it. I'm definitely going to have to clean out the backpack later. But for now, I'm just going to grab this one here. This wasn't the big one. And we can also take this backpack with us we have some baked potatoes we have our sleeping bag and our boat and if we look at the map here we're just going to head down right to this lake which i found over on a live stream while we were exploring and it has a bunch of calcite there now over here by this village i think that there's another like calcite beach but for today we're going to go here we're going to grab that calcite and we'll just mine up like two or three stacks and yeah then we'll uh, get to building also, I just want to say happy February to everyone. I can't believe that it's already past Valentine's Day. This year has felt like it's flying by for me. And I don't know, I'm trying to be more organized with my content, more organized with my life, as I've mentioned in the other long plays. And I've been planning my days with good notes and my iPad. And it's definitely helped me stay on track a lot better, like having lists of stuff to do. And I just integrated sort of into my breakfast routine checking my ipad and starting to like plan my day but i feel like especially at the end of last year i kind of got overwhelmed with the amount of stuff that i had to do all the time and this has just been helping me really stay on top of and on track with everything that i need to do but especially for the daily tasks that i don't want to do and all of the stuff that goes into content creation and being a youtuber it's helped so so much I also have tried a new recipe this month already. We made some lasagna soup for Valentine's Day. And I know that like soup in lasagna form or lasagna in soup form, I should say, sounds kind of weird. But actually it was really, really good. Sorry, I lost my train of thought there for a moment because I don't... Where did that guy come from? There's like no wandering trader or anything around here. He's just like out here by himself. Okay. Anyways, so the lasagna soup we made yesterday for Valentine's Day dinner as like a special meal to try out with each other. And it was so, so good. It's so good that I'm actually putting it on our like regular weekly rotation. Well, maybe not weekly, like monthly, I should say. Anyways, all of that is to say that I'm doing pretty good with my New Year's resolution so far and I'm feeling really good about them. I'm trying to keep up with everything and I feel like I'm doing an okay job. I hope everything with your New Year's resolutions are also going good. If you want to share in the comment section, feel free. Let me know how they're going. I tried to make my New Year's resolutions this year something that I wouldn't give up on in 25 seconds. So I'm pretty proud of me for lasting into February, the middle of February to be exact. I also know like who is actually talking about their New Year's resolutions still in February, but I actually like having these little video check-ins as well because I know someone out there is probably like, Oh, I wish I had someone to do New Year's resolutions with me. And I'm that person. I'm doing them still. So it kind of also helps me be accountable to somebody, even if it's just, you know, somebody who's watching this video. 
that stuff out of the way, I don't really have that much new going on with me that I can talk about in this video. Actually, no, I can talk about Hardcore Episode 11 that just came out, which is incredible. Never thought that we'd make it to Episode 11 in a hardcore world. We're at day like 880 in game as well. So it's my longest ever hardcore world that I've ever had, including all of my Twitch worlds. And I was pretty nervous to start this one as I've never really made like a auto sorting system before. And I was kind of like having initiation like paralysis because it was just such a large project that I didn't want to like mess it up or anything. And also I should probably like watch where I'm going at this point. Ugh, skeletons. I don't, I'm so sick of skeletons. Ooh, diorite. We need that. We can just uh, mine this up while we avoid that skeleton and then talk about the hardcore video that just came out. I don't think he's going to leave us alone, so let's just get him out of the way. Anyways, yeah, so I spent about like two months kind of in my own brain about it until about a week before I really started the episode. I really got into the planning phase with like doing stuff in creative and trying to figure out which items that I was going to sort and store. And then came all of the mining and that took a really long time. I seriously think that took me like over a week just to mine. Like genuinely we mined almost 50,000 blocks of stone, gra uh, gravel, diorite, andesite, you know, dirt. And then setting up the actual system and getting enough redstone. Is there going to be any torches in my inventory? Of course not. So let's just put this torch in my offhand. Well, the lantern instead. Maybe there'll be some easy diorite down here, but it doesn't appear that there is. So we'll move on. Anyways, it was an immense project and I'm so, so happy with how it turned out. I'm so happy that I did that. You know what I mean? Oh, and here we are, I think. This is the little calcite lake I was telling you guys about. This is on the other side of a redwood forest. And oh my gosh, actually, this valley is so beautiful. I don't know if I would have built where we're building now if I would have found this first. This is so pretty. You know, I wouldn't have probably named our area Clovervale had we lived here, but wow, this is gorgeous. I love like the big trees in the background and like... The forest in front of us with the spruce and the oak. And this is like a really good location actually with the mountain. Oh my gosh. When I peeked at the map, I saw that we're just on the other side of where we spawned as well. So through that redwood forest is actually where we spawned. So it's not too far away from the spawn and where we pick now. Maybe we'll come and build something here soon though. And here we are with all this beautiful calcite. Oh my gosh. Now, you guys will have to let me know, since like the 116 update, what has been one of your favorite blocks that they've added? Because for me, it's definitely probably calcite that I've used the most. And I really like deep slate and I really like moss. Obviously, I've used those quite a bit as well. Wait, I wonder what else we can do with this block. Okay, it has some chipped variants. And then we can make polished calcite and some counters and stuff. Oh, calcite stairs. Oh, that's nice. Anyways, I think I mentioned in another long play before that I want to use copper more, but I just feel like I never know how to use it. Like I want to use a little copper gradient in my roof, but at the same time, I feel like I don't know how to like I mean, I can place the blocks. That's not the issue. I just feel like I don't know how to do it. It's weird. It's a weird feeling. Maybe in one of our builds here in Clovervale, we can use some copper and try to make a nice little roof gradient or something and I can get more confident with using it in general. But first let's get fortune. That way we don't have to worry about running out of copper and having to go mining again and all that stuff. It is everywhere, but the more that we can collect of it, the better I feel about mining it. Also, I just want to say like how good that they did with adding like calcite moss deep slate copper all at the same time like those together all those blocks are such a good palette and honestly i'm happy to see that we're going to be getting some extra copper blocks and also the tough blocks i'm really excited about because i really like tough although i don't use it that much in mizunos because it's a little bit like cold toned and there's not really much else that kind of goes with that like blue tone it has but in vanilla, I think it's such a wonderful block for like 
creating cliffs and like custom terrain and stuff. I'm so happy to see it get some more love as well. That being said, it's actually not the copper or the tough blocks or even the mobs that I'm the most excited about for the next Minecraft update. I mean, even they just released a, you know, new skeleton type as well, which is actually really interesting. I was wondering when we were going to get another one of those. And this one looks really, really cool, the bogged. But the thing I'm the most excited for is actually the crafter. I'm so excited for the crafter. I cannot even explain how excited I am. I know it's so silly. I'm setting up my first auto craft as spruce trapdoors. Those are my most used block, my most crafted block. I use them constantly. I need them to be auto crafted. But I also think about farms that I have, like iron farms, being able to compress down, you know, your iron into iron blocks and stuff. I think that is so cool. Melon and pumpkin farms will no longer need to be manually crafted into melons. You can just have the crafter do it before it goes into the chest. Not to mention like for gold farms or bamboo farms or any other farms that are needing to craft down recipes. Prismarine farms, can you imagine? You won't even have to craft anything. You can just set up an auto crafter to like craft prismarine bricks and dark prismarine and sea lanterns and all of that. I think it's gonna be amazing. And let's just look here quickly for some sand. Oh, we can go over here on the way home and just mine up some sand because I'm gonna need to make some white concrete, I think, as well. And if we see any like exposed gravel on the way or anything, if like we see a big patch, we can grab some of that as well because I don't think we have that much. White concrete pretty much goes decently well with the calcite and it won't be that much of a hassle to get now because of course, we have the skeleton farm, so we have unlimited bone meal, which means unlimited white dye as well. And seriously, I mean it, we're coming back to this valley and we're building something. I want to build something purple here. I feel like that's just going to go super well. I don't know what purple we're going to use, but we're going to build some kind of lavender field house. Oh, especially with the framed blocks mod, we can probably make something super, super cool because we can make slabs and stairs of blocks that don't normally have slabs and stairs. And honestly, I would literally give anything for that mod to be vanilla, even though I know it probably doesn't match Mojang's style. At the same time, I need calcite trapdoors. I don't know. A little bit of a skip ahead here as I just was falling down that mountain a lot and that's pretty embarrassing. But anyways, the plan is still to grab some sand and some gravel on the way home, although we are probably going to have to sleep because I don't want any mobs bothering us while we're going to be mining up some, you know materials for our build i haven't seen too much gravel yet but i'm hoping up at this like stony shore kind of biome i don't know if it's actually a stony shore but there was a bunch of stone up here i'm hoping that there's some here oh yeah there's there's a bunch i think oh yeah right here there's a ton all right let's quickly sleep and then we're, let's mine up the stuff that we're gonna need to mine the sand and the gravel as mentioned let's go get the sand. I probably should have just got the gravel while I was there, but that's okay. We'll come back for it. I'm already halfway away, so you know what I mean? Like, my brain was just saying sand then gravel. So I have to do the sand first. And luckily we have this big like sand dune beach kind of thing with these sea oats. They're kind of cute. But we're going to just mine up a bunch of this, maybe like two or three stacks. That way we have enough for glass in the future as well. We don't need a ton of like the sand. I don't think we're going to use that much white concrete, but just for glass in the future until we have like a villager that can trade glass would be nice. The ASMR of mining sand is just so wonderful. I, it's, I think one of my favorite sounds in Minecraft. Oh, there's a bunch of gravel there as well. Hopefully it's like a couple layers of gravel. That way we won't have to go back. Oh my gosh, it's just so satisfying. You can just go back and forth in these like little mining lines and just mine up. What? Did we just find buried treasure randomly? Hello? <laughs> what do you mean? This has never happened to me ever before in minecraft i have never just randomly found buried treasure before and there's diamonds and emeralds and there's so many cool things in here what do you mean 
Let me know in the comments, has this ever happened to you before? And if it has, like, what did you find in your buried treasure? Oh my gosh. Wow, I can just genuinely not believe my luck. Oh my goodness. Let's put all of this stuff in our backpack. That way we can still collect some more stuff. And oh my goodness. We have a stack and a half of sand right now. I definitely want to get at least like another half stack, maybe another stack and a half. I can't believe that. I have had worlds that I've been playing in for two years that has never, I've never found a random buried treasure. But this one, I don't know. This is sort of a lucky world to me. This world has such a good vibe for me and it has a, a lot of good memories from streams and from the long play videos for me. Well, and the good part too is that I think you guys like this world as well. I've had a lot of really, really nice comments and I just want to say thank you guys so much for the support on the first two videos and the streams in this world. I finally recently got my silver play button from YouTube for hitting 100,000 subscribers. And I'm in the process right now of also filming of a 100K Q&A video as well. And in that video, I'm going to talk a little bit about like my process to become a YouTuber and like how I got here. And I just want to say thank you because it would not be possible without you. Without people watching my videos and supporting the content, this wouldn't be a possibility at all for me. So I just want to say thank you. But more sappy appreciation will be coming in the upcoming video, like I mentioned. Oh, this shovel is getting very dangerously low. Probably just mine this up until the shovel's gone, then we can go. There's like almost none left though. Oh, I think I'm gonna have to get another shovel and mine this up. It'll bother me if I don't like finish this little patch of gravel. And having a crafting table in my backpack is probably the most amazing function of this backpack. I'm sure it does better things and I'm sure that there's like way cooler things that you can do with it from like all the upgrades that you can do. But for me being able to craft on the go, that's amazing. And you know what, we'll just take a little bit more sand off the top since we're already here. And we have a brand new shovel, so let's just mine a bunch more of this out. Did I just spawn right there? Hello? Do you have anything good? Ooh, small drip leaf. I think I got emeralds from the thing, right? Ooh, nice. Okay, let me get that small drip leaf. Just double checking there's nothing else I want. Yeah. Thanks, Mr. Wandering Trader. Going back to mining sand now. Okay, finally done mining sand, and now it's time to head back to the base. As we still have a little bit of mining to do, and we're gonna have to hit the nether. And our nether spawn is not that nice. But we're gonna have to mine for some diorite, and I think I'm gonna try to actually get some dirt while we're down there as well in the caves, because I think I'm gonna have to terraform over where the area where the enchanter's cottage is gonna go. And genuinely, I have like 20 dirt in my storage room and that's not going to be enough. Absolutely not. Not by a long shot. But we're going to the nether because I need some crimson wood and I want to bring that like stripped crimson vibe into the enchanter's cottage. That way it kind of matches the room below. And even the Minecraft game is crying because it doesn't want to go to the nether. I feel it. Unfortunately, it's just something that we're going to have to do. So let's go caving first and then hopefully we don't die in the nether. I really, really hope not. Actually, before we go caving and into the nether, let me just empty out my inventory and clean up a little bit. Okay, that only took about five minutes because I had a bunch of new stuff to put away, but that's fine. Now we have a clean inventory and I'm ready to go on, well, I guess this little adventure into the caves. Now we don't need to get that much diorite, but I want to get some dirt as well. But we did pick up some diorite earlier. And you know what? Now that I see those, I have forgotten my torches. Of course. 
I did make some charcoal earlier, so we can grab some of that from our furnace. And you know what? We'll just grab like half of that. That's fine. That is one major thing that botany pots are very good for is having an excess of logs so you can make some charcoal. All right, back into the caves we go. We're armed with our diamond sword. We should be fine. We have plenty of food. We have torches. And we have a dream, I think. Oh my gosh, yes. There's diorite right here. Nice. I know I ask you guys kind of like weird questions all the time in these long plays, but let me ask you today's weird question. Weird question of this long play. What material do you guys like to gather the most? Whether it's just like for usefulness or for the ASMR. I think for me, definitely sand. Also, calcite and amethyst. I feel like they all have really, really good sounds when you mine them. They're just great. But I mean, also like taking down like one of those super big spruce trees is also very, very satisfying. But let me know your thoughts. Mining moss is also pretty good. Mining mushroom blocks is also good. Oh my gosh. Actually, that might be my favorite. I'm not going to lie. But yeah, let me know what your guys' favorite blocks to mine are. And let me know why it's your favorite block. Because I always think it's very interesting to learn about you guys and how you play Minecraft. And the reasons why you play Minecraft as well. I don't know. It's just very fun. That probably should do it. Because we have over a stack. Now let's just double check down here. Was there anything else? No, no dirt down here. There's a little bit of moss in the ceiling here, but it's kind of a pain to get. So let's go find some extra dirt while we're here and we'll just go try and maybe get like a stack, maybe a stack and a half. I don't know exactly how much dirt we're going to need. And obviously we have like all this grass here, which we can grab, but I don't necessarily only want to grab the grass. I'd like to find like a big dirt patch. You know what I mean? And oops, I was trying to place a torch. And I don't know, I just don't want to ruin any of the stuff upstairs. Like, I don't want to ruin any of the landscape and then have to come down here and mine dirt. So I'd rather just take the dirt here and then just, yeah, use this dirt instead of ruining the upstairs dirt. That's the nice dirt, you know what I mean? And we're just going to ignore that I missed that jump. It was a pretty difficult jump, okay? Oh, I keep doing that. I was just meant to place a torch. I didn't actually want to make a path block, but. <sighs> All right, we'll take this dirt here as well. There's quite a bit of it. Maybe we can go see a little bit further down if there's any more dirt. Oh, here's one of those like glowing moss biomes. This is pretty cool. I don't know how to feel about it, but maybe we can do something cool with that someday. Some more diorite if we need it. Ooh, it looks like some mud down here. That's kind of nice as I think I want to use mud as part of the pathways once we upgrade our pathways eventually. Like mud, brown mushroom block, maybe a little bit of jungle. I don't know. And let's get some andesite as well as I think I'm going to use like a stone base, kind of like we did for the main base or for our like a main starter house. And I think we're definitely out of andesite as well, which is unfortunate. So we'll just grab some while we're here. Now, luckily, I don't have to gather any mangrove wood or any cherry wood. We have a ton of that already. But I think building in that like red color is going to be really really good for the build like red and pink i, th I just think it'll look really cool because it'll match like the roof and you know the room underneath and then of course we can kind of decorate the inside with like the red and pink theme oh my gosh finally found some more dirt so what i'm going to do is i'm going to mine the rest of this up with what's left of my shovel and then i'm going to head up to the surface so we can start our build um I can't wait to have another diamond shovel and not an iron shovel anymore because the durability on these things is almost nothing. Like, 
I forget how little you can use a shovel before it's actually gone. Well, and I guess that's all iron tools, right? But like compared to stone, they just feel so much better. But soon we're going to be able to make a new diamond shovel. We'll be able to enchant it. Unbreaking three is like way more important than efficiency at this point. But then we'll also be able to get villagers so we can put mending on them. And of course we have our XP farm, so it'll be great. And this is so unsatisfying that we can't finish this, but we can actually craft another shovel here, a stone one. Oh, that's the wrong way. No one saw that. Don't bring that up in the comments, okay? No one roasted me for that one. Well, now that I have this, I'm going to gather up a little bit more of this dirt, and then I'm going to see you guys back up on the surface, because I think our build today is going to take a while, and I don't want to make you watch me mine any more dirt. Okay, I stopped by the storage room really quickly to grab a couple of stacks of cobblestone. That way we can bridge a little bit easier in the nether. But actually what I want to do is go over to the skeleton spawner really quick and grab a bow and some arrows because the gas are relentless where we spawn. All right, let's just head down there and we'll grab a bow and arrows and then we'll be on our way. There we go, and some arrows, nice. I have a very bad feeling that this is going to be very uncomfy, uncozy. So I guess let's try to make this as fast as possible and we only really need to get like maybe a half stack of crimson wood at the most. Oh, you know what? Before we go in, let me put my bow in my hotbar just in case we spawn with a ghast in our face. And here we go. Now I have been in here before. I did come in here on the live stream to get some crimson wood. And yep, see, this is exactly what I'm talking about. Oh gosh. The noises that gasps make are so hard to make into a relaxing long play. I genuinely cannot stress enough how much I dislike the gas noises in this game. All right, let's just make our pathway a little bit thicker here. So that way, if I have to run, we don't have to like worry about falling off into the lava below and dying horrifically and losing everything. That would not be very comfy cozy either. All right, let's go. Let's go get some crimson wood. I know where some is and we spawned in this like brambly biome and all of those brambles will actually hurt you. They're like sweet berry bushes. And there's also like hoglins here and gas are everywhere. And they just drop like weird meat as well. Now, we came over this way before, so let's just kind of jump down. And we need to find another area of crimson because this is the only crimson I found and I pretty much like stripped it bare because it was like four trees. But I think just north of us, there's more. We just gotta jump over, nice. Ugh, I'm not a big fan of these flowers here on the ground either. They'll burn you. That's all brambly biome. Oh, there's another fortress over there. Okay, good to know. I mean, I don't think we're gonna do the dragon in this world, but... Oh, here we go. Here's some crimson. Uh, let's be smart about this though. Let's kind of like tower over or pillar over, I should say. I wonder if we can climb up and down these vines. Like, I wonder if they're like nether vines. They're willow vines. Well, I guess sort of they are, but if you fall all the way down, you still take a lot of damage. Doesn't really matter. Let's just grab this crimson stem and get the heck out of here. Overall, this has been pretty peaceful and pretty safe, and I think that this is definitely more than enough wood so we can just leave. Oh no, I see the gas feet. Oh no. Oh no. Please don't see me. Just let me- just let me finish this, please. Oh man. Oh, come on, please. I'm just a baby. 
guess I'm gonna have to bow her down. Oh god. <sighs> not very comfy, not very cozy, not very happy, only sad. You know what? I'm just gonna get this and then I'm gonna get out of here and no more nether noises for us. I'm just gonna skip through until we're back home. Oh my gosh, finally. <sighs> I had to fight magma cubes and two more gas on the way out. Oh my gosh. I'm so happy to be home. Oh, but I did get another kind of wood. Let me show you when we get over to our house. Let's just swim over there. But I did get another kind of wood. I didn't actually realize it was a real tree. I don't think it'll be very useful to us today, but it is something pretty cool to look at maybe in the future. I didn't get a sapling though. So if we do like this wood, I'll have to go back and get another sapling or try to get a sapling. I don't even know if you can grow it outside of the nether, but hopefully we can. Hopefully it drops saplings. Maybe they're just really rare. Anyways, this is the log, it's called Hellbark, and it makes this like very dark kind of purpley red planks. Again, not very romantic for like the build that we're going for, but they do look kind of cool. Maybe it could be useful as a floor or I don't know. There's something about it that I really like, but it's also kind of one of those difficult things that I'm not 100% sure if I like. I don't know, I'm weird. All right, and let's put away these brambles. We'll just throw them in here and then these twigs can go in with our sticks. And yeah, there we go. All of our materials are mostly gathered, I think. So let's get over and do some terraforming. And to do that, we're gonna need some dirt of which I have none. So let's just grab that really quick and then we can sleep and go out there. And you know what, we might as well make another shovel so I can pick up that dirt because I only have this stone one here really quickly. Yeah, let's uh, just craft that up. Wait. Gonna bring some of our stone as well before I make this shovel. So we're gonna probably have to start laying out some blocks and I don't think this is enough stone. So let's grab some cobble and we can put it in the furnaces so that way it can smelt up while we're kind of making our outline and doing our terraforming and stuff. And we can put our glass away. And you know what? We might as well grab the stuff to make some more white concrete as well. I'm getting very distracted at this moment. I'm sorry. We're supposed to be making a shovel and instead I'm doing all this. Then let's get our white dye in here. We can make this white concrete powder. Add a little bit more sand. Do we need any more than that? Hmm, we can make this a little bit of extra. I don't know how much we're gonna need, probably a lot. Hmm, do I need anything in here? No, I don't think it's time for any of that stuff yet, to be honest. We can always come back and get it. Let's grab some oak for our outlines. We'll grab our flowering oak. Let's grab a bunch of spruce. We're gonna need a ton of it probably. Oh, whoops. We can close. Nope, we can close that. I'm just so silly. Sometimes I just don't think. And you know what? We might as well just get some of the roof blocks that we're going to need. So let's grab some mangrove. That should be more than enough. And the crimson. Oh yeah, we have plenty. And the cherry. Yep, that's good. And we'll grab terracotta too because we're going to need terracotta. And over here, we have some dye. So we're going to need some magenta. We're going to need some pink. We're going to need some red. But I think it would also be smart if we just grab some bones over here and also some of our double tall flowers. So we've got the peonies. We've got the lilacs and the roses as well. Let's shove all this in our backpack and we can worry about organizing and everything later. And let's check on how much stone we have. Because we're going to need stone bricks for the base of our build. 
And that doesn't seem like very much. Hmm. I genuinely can't wait to have Silk Touch. That way I can just go mining. We have our little sleeping bag. We have our boat so we can just boat across. All right, I think, I think we have enough stuff. We can always come back if we need more. All right, here we are. A beautiful morning to start building. Now, I actually think right here along this like little path right here, it would be great to have like stairways down to a small dock in the water. But I was also reading the comments and a lot of people said that they'd love to see a little fishing hut. So I think somewhere over here we can add some more docks and then maybe like a little fishing hut as well. I've never built one before, but we could take some notes and some inspiration from our friend Blockdown Builds, who is like the greatest fisherman of all time. Oh yeah, this is the area clearing phase. All right, so let's just start breaking all this stuff right here. I promise I will put you all back. Actually, you know what? I do want to save some of this grass and some of the shrubbies so we can just make some shears and pick all that up. This is so satisfying. Just gathering up everything before we completely change this area and build something new. We're also gonna have to remove these trees. So let's start getting rid of all of these little stumpy thingies. And then of course the spruce trees also have to go. We can always replant later if we want to have more spruce trees or oak trees in this area. I think azalea trees might be the move here though. They just are so beautiful. And the flowering oak trees as well. Definitely have to get some of those over here. And I think for this tree, I'm gonna grab some of these leaves as I'll probably use some on the roof. And you know, I always put like a ton of leaves everywhere. Oh, this is actually such a nice view over here. You can see so well the starter house, I love it. Let's just take a moment here, fill that in. That used to be the entrance into the spider, or the skeleton farm, sorry. A few more things to get rid of really quickly here. We can get rid of this grass block, get rid of this grass really quick. And now we have a little bit of an easier time looking at all of this space. But I do wanna fill this in, just make this a little tiny, tiny bit more flat. Some of these trees might end up having to go and that's no problem, but for now I'll leave them because I don't know exactly how much space I'm going to need. These ones out at the front are also a little tiny bit awkward, so I'm assuming probably once we get the docks in over here, I'll probably remove those with the pathways. You know, I'm probably going to have to cover up this pond back here at some point, but for right now I'm just kind of ignoring it. I don't really want to do anything with it. That's fine, right? But what's not fine is that this is kind of covering up a bunch of space that we have that would be usable that's right next to our little, you know, teleport down elevator thingy. So we're going to have to cut back into this hill. And I was thinking that earlier when I was looking at this, but I was hoping we wouldn't have to. And every time I turn around, I feel like the grass is growing back or maybe I just didn't get it all. There's so much more grass here. You know, I don't want to like complain too much though. I do genuinely really, really like to do terraforming kind of stuff and train work. I just get nervous because I don't feel like I know really how to make terrain look so natural. And so many people are so good at that. And I am good at smoothing, but I really don't know how to make like a, a natural cliff or something and make it like look like it was meant to be like that. And I don't know if I'm like the only one out here struggling with that, but how do y'all do it? I mean, I know part of it is just like practice and like going outside of your comfort zone, but my comfort zone is just comfy and there's snacks in here and 
I get to play video games and yeah. All right, switching gears really quickly. This is one, two, and three. And then four, five. That would be four, three, two, one. Okay. Yeah, well, and so there should be nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, perfect. Sorry, sometimes I have to count out loud while I do this. I know it's not everyone's favorite thing if somebody is counting out loud, but if I don't count out loud, I sometimes get confused. Okay, so that was nine as well. So let's make a square here and we'll bring this over. Just make sure. Yeah, okay, let's bring this over and meet this up. We're going to start with a simple square and then we'll adjust from there. Oh, I guess we were missing one there. Okay, and then we can bring it back along this side. And now we have to keep in mind that we're gonna have an enchanting table in here. So we're not gonna have a ton of space if we keep it this small. Because even if we shove it over here into like a corner, let's say, it would sort of be like that. And that's still not that great. So let's knock out some of this wall here and we'll make it a couple blocks longer and make it like um, a rectangle instead of a square. So this will take it from a nine by nine to a nine by 11. But I still think it could be a little bit longer. So let's take it to like a nine by 13 and we'll go on this side as well. This still leaves our elevator here in the middle of the building. But now there's a lot more space to spread out, add some tables, add some books, maybe a couple of villagers, and the enchantment table, of course. But we're also gonna need an entryway. So I think I wanna do that. Is it gonna be here? Maybe? I think this might be a little bit too small. So if we do this, there's like not a lot of room, but I think we can bring that up forward one. Maybe, I don't know why this is so confusing to look at right now. Let's try again. Okay, we had it at four in and that was a little bit too small. So maybe this time we'll do three in so that there's only two gap there. So one, two, three, four, and yeah, we'll bring it out the fifth space. Okay, maybe six. And I'm doing six because I'm trying to consider also the beams that will be here because I'm gonna have one in the corner there. And that kind of works. So one, two, three, four, and five. This is a better entry space, I think. All right, so this is the basic floor plan of our Enchanter's Cottage that we're gonna be building today. And this is sort of what I do every single time that I do something. If I need to fit something in, I usually build the thing I need to fit in first, like in this case, this like fake enchantment table that's made out of dirt and not books. But once you have an idea of like how much space you need, then you can start to actually place down walls. So we could do some like bookshelves here along the wall. Although those need to shift over one, but that's fine. We don't need to worry about that like right this moment. Let me just make sure that we can match up these blocks with like some beams. So there'll be a beam here. And then I guess we'll do three and then a beam and then three and then a beam and then three and then a beam. Okay, so that works. I think that's sort of what we have going on over there. Although it'll be a little bit different here because the beams will be outside. So we can mirror that on the other side as well. But that means that to make the bookshelves match up, we're gonna have to move the bookshelves over one. And let's just take a different material here. So let's take um, some sand, that's perfect. So our bookshelves will have to go one, two, three, one, two, three, and then one, two, three. And that should match up with the beams on this side, which I think it does. Obviously those beams will be mirrored on this side and we can make those pretty tall. 
And then on the front side, I'm thinking maybe some kind of like study area for the librarian. So maybe some tables and chairs on this side somehow. But now I'm wondering if this build needs to be actually even bigger because this doesn't seem like a lot of space. Maybe it is and I'll, maybe once we get like the actual furniture in here, it'll be fine. All right, so there's our table. So let's put down some chairs. We'll have a chair there and a chair here. And then I don't know how we're going to make that work on the other side, but that's fine. Let's just kind of shift gears because I don't want to think about that to the entryway. So a beam here and then we'll have a beam here. Oh, that makes this floor wide. So this beam needs to be actually one wider. Six was not good enough. So we'll do seven instead. Oh, just another day of needing to deal with this pond, but refusing to do so. But before any bad guys spawn near us, let's sleep really quick. Let's get rid of all of the nighttime and then we'll go back to planning before we actually start building. All right, I think I'm generally happy with the shaping of this now that I'm taking a step back and looking at it because we can always kind of rearrange the elements inside to be how we want them. Whoops, misplaced that, but this will be five wide for the entryway, which is exactly what we wanted. That way we can have a three wide doorway in the middle. And I'm assuming some kind of like little, you know, porch on the front to get up into the build. Then maybe we'll have like a little kind of, well, not that way, but a little reception area or yeah, we'll have some kind of, I think, like a library reception here. And obviously like stacks of books and oh, maybe we can get like one of those typewriters as like a little cash register or computer device. We'll have, you know, our tall bookshelves here. Maybe we could even put some villagers and the traders in there. I know that sounds like pretty bad, but but I think it'll help and I think it'll be a good way to store some villagers that way we don't have them all in one spot just kind of in these like little glass jars. I'm happy with this though so let's start taking down the sand on the inside because we don't really need that. That was just for us to like kind of visualize even though I mean it's hard to visualize but just making sure you have enough space I guess is really really important. So we can just remove all of these and remove the fake desk and then yeah, I guess it's almost time to start building. We'll get rid of these fake pillars too. We already know where they're going, so we don't really necessarily need them right now. Before we build though, I just wanna make sure that I have everything that I need. I'm gonna need spruce and trapdoors and all that stuff. And I know I grabbed a couple of stacks earlier, but I just wanna grab a little bit of extra so we don't have to go back and forth as much. I actually love that the first like other building around the lake that we're building is directly across from the lake. So when we leave our house, we're going to be able to see it, which is so, so cool to me. Let's just grab up our spruce. Let's take all of these things and our trap doors. I don't know if we're going to need fences and signs, but we'll grab them anyways. Oh yeah, we should probably check and see if our stone is done. And it is, thankfully. So let's head back over to the build site. Okay, back over on the build site. Now what I want to do is actually grab some of our stone bricks. And we had some in our backpack, right? Yeah, we do. And what I want to do is actually replace all of the corner bits, just like we did on the starter house with stone. Oh my gosh, I got to stop trying to place... And I'm just going to go up by two on the corner bits. I really want it to look like there's just like a raised stone foundation, but I don't want it to be super high. Like I don't want it to be like, you know, a basement or, you know, part of the actual house. I want the house to just be a very tall house sitting on a, you know, too high foundation, if that makes sense. Oh, <laughs> that tree just grew. Let's just get rid of that because it'll probably be annoying later. 
I think that there's a mod in this mod pack that allows saplings to auto replant themselves and that is just so strange to me. I just don't know which mod does it or if there's a way that I can turn that off. I really don't need saplings to auto replant themselves, but that's okay. And so those saplings don't replant again, let's make sure we grab up everything that's fallen off of this tree and we can just break all of this really quickly. You know, sometimes I regret not adding vein miner to this pack because then we could have just vein mined the leaves, but it's fine. Oh, another thing that a lot of people have asked me about, and I don't know if I have talked about this in videos yet, is that a lot of people are interested in which mod adds the mossy villages. And I'm not going to lie, until I actually started this world, I didn't know that the mossy villages were a feature of anything that I had added. So I have no clue. I'm so sorry. I, I feel very, very bad that I don't know which ones um are, or which mod adds that, but... Uh, if anyone does know and does find out, please let me know. That way I can answer questions if people ask me because I, I just genuinely have no idea. Anyways, back to the build. I am filling in the middle part here with just some stone and andesite. I want it to be like kind of just really uninteresting to look at. And, you know, we could add a little tiny bit of cobble in here, you know, just at like the bottom where it looks like it might be breaking under the weight of like an old building. But I want the build to have a gradient on the roof. And that's where I really want your eye to be drawn. I don't want the bottom to be super like wildly interesting. Because I feel like that takes away a little bit, you know? Just a little bit of broken up cobble at the bottom. Then we'll do our andesite and stone just like we've been doing. And I think something like that is fine. It's very small, very simple, very you know, delicate looking in a way. Just kind of scatter it around in bits. And of course I always place a block where I don't mean to every single time. Watching me build must look like you're watching somebody like make a mess. I honestly think so. And we'll fill this last little bit in here. And of course I mess up again. It's fine. And this is fine. This is perfect. We don't really need anything different than this. For now, this works. Okay, now on top of our stone bricks, we're going to start adding in our beams and then we'll do it every three after that. And since this is a bigger build, I want to do the beams out by one. That way we have a little bit more space on the interior. But also I feel like it'll just look better if it has like some archways and stuff. And of course I'm in the pond again. Ugh. All right, this one goes in the corner and then that one goes on the edge and I'm not doing the um, shorter sides yet just because I don't know if I want to pop those out as well yet. I haven't decided, but we'll come back to that. We always can change it up, you know. All right, next is adding in the actual beams. So of course, for this, we're going to go into our backpack. We're going to grab our spruce logs and then we'll grab our oak and our flowering oak logs from the chipped mod. Then we'll just go onto the edge here and we'll start towering up with our different oak and spruce. And I normally always have the spruce in my offhand while I, you know, strip as I go, but it doesn't really work when you're also placing oak that you don't want stripped. And we'll go up, I think, one more here. So that'll be six tall. Yeah, I think six tall is how tall I want this building to be. I know that's very tall for my builds, but I think with the big bookcases, it'll look cool. And if we just back up here, we can kind of envision what a whole building that high will look like. I think that's a good height. I think it's fine. So let's go over here. We'll add another six tall beam. Oh, whoopsie, this is exactly what I was trying to avoid. 
So we'll add a flowering oak log there. Why am I making this so complicated? You know what? We're just going to put that back out of my offhand and I'll strip after. And I think we need to go one more up. I jump off these beams like I'm having Feather Falling 4 because I always have Feather Falling on my boots in like my hardcore world and yeah, I've got to get used to the fact that this is going to take a little bit of damage for me. It's going to hurt a little bit more than I want it to, but that's okay. We have fish. We have some other food as well that we cooked up. And of course we have the baked potatoes, so we should be fine. But I'm going to take a quick little chatting break and I'll bring you guys back once we get all of these done up on the front at least. Okay, really quickly, I just want to go and make some of this concrete powder into actual concrete because I forgot to do that earlier. So how will be the best way to do this? Can we just like mine it from here and then place? Oh, we don't have efficiency on our pickaxe yet. I'm so used to having efficiency when I mine this. I guess we're going to do this kind of like the old fashioned way and just place and then break and place. Oh, I tried again. I'm so used to being able to press both down. Oh, no. There's like a data pack from Vanilla Tweaks that you can throw concrete powder into a cauldron that has water in it and then it comes out as concrete. Like, you don't have to do this. And I feel like that should be a vanilla feature. Even if it's like a hidden feature, I feel like that should be a vanilla feature. Cause like, what do cauldrons do in vanilla? Are they just decorative? I think it would be interesting if they added some kind of mechanic where you can actually like, wash dye off of things or you know influence potion making in some way with cauldrons that would be really cool also i just realized that i didn't get any of the diorite or any of the calcite into my backpack that we're going to need for this build so let's just go grab that now and thinking about it i actually do think i have a little bit of white concrete that i made the other day for my live stream so let's see if that's in here as well all right, and now to remember where I keep all this stuff. So I think white concrete was, yep, there it is. All right, and let's grab some calcite as well. And then we've got the diorite and we'll take that. That should be probably more than enough. All right, and then what else do we need to grab while we're over here? Should we grab some more spruce? Well, my backpack's, my inventory's full, but my backpack isn't, so we can just put everything in there. Oh yeah, definitely some more oak definitely going to take some spruce as well because we're going to have to make so many stairs and trap doors and all of that and I'm going to take over our carpenter's table and our mason's table as well I'll probably need to make some lanterns so let's just grab some charcoal and we'll take some iron as well and let's head back over all right, let's get these tables placed down here and then we can put our backpack here just for some extra storage space. I'm using it as a chest. And let's grab all the stuff that we need. So we need these spruce logs, we need those azalea, or sorry, flowering logs, and then the regular oak logs. We can make some more azalea logs though because I do like using those. 
And we'll continue building up our pillars here. Now that those are all built up, let's take out our calcite, our concrete, our diorite, and the polished, of course. And let's start putting some walls down. Ow, oh, I miss the water bucket clutch. All right, let's just place those torches back down, at least somewhat of the way. And let's get up here and start placing our blocks. And since we have the most calcite, let's start with some calcite and then we'll transition over into our other blocks. And I do this a little bit randomly. I know that there's probably like better ways to do it, but honestly, I think for a build of this size, it doesn't really matter if you try to gradient like, you know, the walls that are basically all like white and gray. I don't think that really matters too much. All right, let's finish up this side here and do note that I did leave some spaces in the middle for a window. I think that's gonna look really good. Yeah, that's actually, I think, perfect. Now I do want to do a little bit of detailing on the front before we continue building in case we need to like adjust the height of anything. That way we don't have to rebuild it all later. And this trick right here is something that I learned from Blockdown Builds. So big shout out to Blockdown, we love you. But basically using stairs and slabs, you can create a little pocket of like blocks that you can see through right there and I think it would be interesting if we had this be like a different color. So maybe we can tie it in with like the red or the pink. Um, you know, I think I'm gonna try mangrove. I think mangrove might work well. So we'll place this in here. And then of course we're gonna strip it down cause we wanna see that beautiful red color. And let's see how that looks. I like it. It's a little bit plain, I won't lie. Let me see, does that help? No. Okay, well, I'm gonna have to think about what else we can put there, but I definitely want to continue that over the other sections as well. Just need some more slabs and stairs, which we can just craft up in the backpack. And I know that I talk about this a lot, but I cannot express how much I actually just love this backpack mod. It is my favorite backpack mod of all time. All right, let's remove that mangrove because I like the red. I just don't like that. And let's look in our backpack and what else can we do? Maybe some terracotta? Maybe we can glaze it and then it'll look better. All right, we can take it over and maybe try to find a different variant in the workbench. Oh wait, it's not glazed yet. I just said that we have to glaze it and I don't have my furnace, so we'll have to go get it. All right, back with the furnace, let's place this down and we'll get our charcoal in there and we'll put our terracotta in there and let's let that smelt up. And while we're waiting on that, let's go ahead and get up here and continue working on our build. All right, let's jump over. Oh. Okay, that was a little bit embarrassing. We're just not gonna talk about that. Anyways, let's continue on building. So something I wanted to mention to you guys is um, I have been playing a lot of other games lately besides Minecraft. And I'm sure I've mentioned this before, but I'm doing a Stardew Valley playthrough over on Twitch and I'm trying to get perfection on my farm. And genuinely, I am so happy, so excited, so energetic and enthusiastic about the Stardew Valley playthrough. I think it's one of my best ones I've ever done. But beyond that, I've been playing a lot of games in my Discord lately. I've been doing like little Discord streams. And I just finished the game Stray, which is like a cyberpunk cat game. 
and I was expecting kind of just like a cute little platformer with a cat and instead I got a heart-wrenching game. <laughs> well, I guess it was still a cyberpunk platformer, but it was also so, so good and so sad. Not No spoilers, like I'm not going to say any spoilers, but if you guys have played that, let me know. Genuinely, I really, really loved it and I'm super glad that I finally got the chance to play it. Now let's check, do we have any red glazed terracotta? And let's see, um, in the Mason's workbench. Oh, some of these are a little bit ugly, but you know what? I kind of like that one. So let's change that one. And maybe get some regular glazed as well for that. Let's see how that looks. And then maybe we'll do one where we have like a little bit of a pattern. Yeah, I actually think the pattern is probably going to be better. So let's do this really quick on all this front part. And then let's see how it looks from out front. Grab some more of that glazed terracotta. And oh yeah, I actually really like that. It still has those red tones that we had with the stripped mangrove. But there's movement, there's color, there's life. And I think that that is really, really good. Although this is not placed the same direction and that's bothering me. Wait, <laughs> wait, how do I place it that way? Okay, that's not right either. Okay, there we go. All right, we can fill that in and then let's jump out front and see how it's looking. Oh yeah, I really like that. That is way, way better. All right, let's get into crafting up some extra spruce components so we can make some archways so we can clear this out here. And we can take some of this spruce and make some planks. And we'll go ahead and craft up a bunch of stairs because even if we won't use them all for these archways, we'll also use them for the roof. And then we'll make some trap doors as well. Although six, I don't think is gonna be enough. Let's make a little bit more. That should be fine for now. Anyways, let's get these archways placed in. And of course, I'm still playing Valorant. Um, I'm never not playing Valorant, even though it's funny because my friend recently asked me, she was like, oh my gosh, I see you playing Valorant all the time. You know, what do you think of the game? Do you like it? And of course, I very honestly told her I actually hate that game. And I'm like, why do I keep playing it if I hate it? Well, I don't hate it, okay? I, I like it. I'm just so bad at it. But... I'm getting better, slowly but surely I'm getting better. And I'm gonna be starting Horizon Zero Dawn on my Discord pretty soon because I just found out that the Horizon Forbidden West that was on PS uh, or PlayStation for exclusively for a while, it's coming to Steam like in March. So finally I'm gonna be able to play that. So I just wanna refresh my memory of what happened in the first game and play that up a little bit. But if you want to share, let me know what you've been playing. Let me know what's coming out that you're looking forward to. I'm so excited for lots and lots of different games. So let me know what you're thinking and how you're feeling about the games that are out right now. And while we're doing that, I guess I will build up this entryway. Alright, let's go in with this frame here. And I think that is like an okay-ish frame for the doorway, the entranceway. But before I add in the entranceway, I think that we should probably add in... Well, how are we going to get up here? So maybe like a little staircase or like... Oh, you know what would be cute? Like a little deck out on the front.
All right, so let's try and build up something like that, like a little deck to go out on the front. Now, how is this gonna work? How far are we gonna come out? I think this is definitely too far. It looks a little bit awkward and kind of blocks off some of the natural pathway. So let's remove like two of those. Maybe we could do stairs here though, instead of full blocks and it'll feel a little bit better. But let's go back one more because that didn't look right either. So we'll do something like this and then bring these over. That might be a little bit better, honestly. And then we can cover the outside with trapdoors just to make it look a little bit reinforced. I think that is okay. Yeah, let's try that over here as well. Just kind of blend it in. And I know it sort of, you know, cuts off the pathway again. Oops. But that's okay. We can fix that later with some terraforming. If I was going to add stairs on top of this outside of it, though, that would have been a little bit awkward. I think back there we should just like stick a leaf or something, maybe a couple leaves. Yeah, maybe just make it a little bushy over there so it doesn't look weird. No one will even know. Okay, that's kind of cute. Now we have this little space here. Do we wanna trap door this for like the railing? I don't think so. Maybe we can come back with like some spruce fences later. Anyways, moving on to the doorway. So I want this to be our typical, you know, archway doorway like we always do with like the three wide door. But I think instead of using trap doors, I'm gonna actually use those stripped mangrove that we did earlier. I think that's gonna bring a lot of interest to the doorway. And here I am placing blocks where I said, oh, we're gonna add a three wide doorway. And then I, of course, just immediately ignore what I was saying in my brain. All right, let's get this stone removed here and let's place down the spruce planks that we used for the front deck area. Cause we're gonna use those inside as well. They're my favorite. And let's see here, I think I wanna use, I wanna bring this in one so we can do an archway. And then, yeah, we'll bring in our mangrove and we'll strip that of course. And let's put a plank there and a mangrove and there we go. And that's cute, I like that. Now up on the front here, let's make like an archway. And I did these kinds of archways in my hardcore storage. So let's see if they look good here. Um, I, I'm assuming they probably won't cause they're a little bit squarish, but yeah, it's a little bit oval compared to the rest of the build that's like more round with the archways. So let's, uh, let's just remove those and do the classic kind of like, you know, spherical looking one. See, it's okay to sometimes make mistakes or try something out. Even if you don't like it, the worst that happens is that you tear it down, you know? Okay, this definitely needs some rounding on the front here. So we're gonna go with some calcite stairs here. That is much, much better. We can also make frame trapdoors if we want to, but I'm thinking actually probably a lantern there and maybe some trap doors going across. Hmm, on second thought, I think that should be one higher up. That way it can be a little bit easier to go across. And I just need one more trap door. Okay, there we go. That is better. And for now, I'm just gonna add a couple of leaves here. Doesn't have to be anything too fancy, but just to tie it in to down there a little bit. 
Yeah, the front of this building is actually looking really, really cool. I'm really, really liking it so far. All right, let's head back over and up the little staircase here. I really like this. I really genuinely do. Now, what to do next? I guess for this to make sense, we're going to have to pop out this edge as well. Sometimes I really hope that I don't have to pop out this edge, but we'll have to do it on both sides for this to truly make sense and be, I guess, even. And then we can build up our pillars again, going on this side. And I guess we should probably do the back pillars as well. Minecraft YouTuber finishes the back of the base. What? And I don't think you guys need me to really narrate what I'm doing at this point. You all know this is how it goes. We're just making some beams. And from here, it looks fine too. So let's have a little bite of our salmon. And let's get to placing the rest of the floor in over here. Probably gonna have to go make some more of these spruce planks. Definitely will have to. And let's try to spread out the torches so that no spiders spawn anywhere under the floor. Cause I'm not gonna fill this all the way in just to save on blocks. And actually we can move our elevator up. Um, that will be actually very helpful. We won't have to do that later if we do it now. Really? Really? <laughs> okay, it's just started to be a brand new day and already it's raining. All right, let's grab some more of our stack spruce planks. That should be good. Um, actually, maybe not. Maybe this is not good. I always underestimate the amount of planks that a floor takes. You know what I mean? I always think that it's way less than it actually is. And you know, while I'm thinking about it, we should change the block face of the elevator block. So you can just take a block and right click it under the elevator and then it'll change your elevator face. So now the elevator face looks like that. It's not the white block anymore. And I think that that looks good. It's matching the theme of the building a little bit and it stands out. So that's nice. And let's just make sure this still works. So there we go down here and we're good. So now we can jump back up and now we're back outside. All right, now time to get the last planks that we're gonna need for real this time, at least until we do the indoor ceiling. 64 should be able to do it though. Oh, there's a creeper over there. I see over by the map. We're gonna have to take care of that, I think. Hey, buddy. Thanks. We do love a creeper that doesn't give us any problems because if he would have just blown up this house that I'm building, I would have been pretty sad. But let's add some lighting in here just temporarily. We're going to eventually change that out for something else. 
but at least there's lighting here so that no mobs are directly spawning on top of us. And also, I'm so sorry once again for anyone that's watching me for the first time or if you are not used to me being all over the place. Hi. This is just like my ADHD talking, I promise. Sometimes when I'm building on the fly, I just, um... Well, this is why I don't really build on the fly that much, to be honest. It's really, really hard for me to keep like things in perspective when I'm building on the fly. I normally just, I really struggle, you know? I do things in sections as I feel like doing them, but I always try to do the front of the building first because that's the way that I'm always going to be like going out and looking. And now, of course, you know, we have to do the sides, we have to do the back. And let's get some more red terracotta smelting and change some of this into our... Oh gosh. Um, let's go sleep before we have another lightning strike. Oh, come on! Is it still a thunderstorm? I guess not, but let's get some more of those minimized glazed terracotta that we got from before. And here we go back into the house to start decorating the inside. Now, for now, I'm just going to place all of that terracotta down because I don't know exactly where the windows are going to go yet, and then we can fix that later. And then we'll do these ones. Actually, we can remove that one. We do know where the windows are going to go on this side because it's going to mirror the other side. Then we'll put down our regular glazed terracotta in the middle and we'll still need some more of the other kind, the minimized kind. So let's go make that really quickly. All right, and now let's go finish off that little back wall area. Oh my goodness. Um, did you just spawn like literally on top of me? All right, I don't have time for you right now. I'm a very busy businesswoman that's very busy. So, you know, if you could just please stop and go away, that would be great. Also, sorry, I was just making sure that that was even and it is. Um, I was a little bit nervous there for a moment, but I don't know why. I personally blame the wandering trader for just actually jump scaring me and there was also like that thunderstorm as well like that was very weird all right so this one will go like that as well we need a little bit more And let's just fill in this little back section here. And this, I think we did all just regular concrete and stuff here. So all the like wider blocks there. I don't know why we didn't do that as the red terracotta, but it's fine. Whatever. We'll ignore it for now. Let's finish doing up these beams here on this side. And now we can go ahead and fill in this wall as well. Also, I hope you guys don't mind these little breaks of not talking in between, like, while I'm building. I just sometimes, especially for these longer videos, run out of things to say. It's a little bit different than the live stream because obviously in the live stream I have the chatters to help me, like, talk all the time. 
And I've done enough of these long plays now that I feel like I'm getting better at chatting for longer periods, but I don't 100% know what to say all the time. So sometimes I feel like I go into these like awkward pauses, but it's not really intentional. I just don't really know all the time what to talk about. Especially in this point where we're just placing some blocks, you know? I know a lot of you have said though that you really prefer these long plays where I'm chatting over the long plays where I don't chat. And I totally understand it. It definitely helps like, you know, keep concentration on the video or it feels like you're hanging out with a cozy friend or so. I think those three windows are okay. We might switch it to a two window, but I think the three windows are fine. We'll have to see after the next pillar goes up how I actually like it. All right, I think it's finally time. Let's go up and finish this little part right here. Go up one more. get this all filled in really quickly that way this part is kind of just like completely done Let's see. Yeah, I think we're going to swap these just because it looked a little bit awkward on the side there. I don't know if there's any way that I can fix that besides swapping these. Oh, wait, I needed that. My bad. So from the inside, we're definitely going to have to put some kind of beam or something to kind of block that off so it doesn't look as awkward, but we can cover that on the inside and it'll be fine. Oh my gosh, this wandering trader is so annoying. I'm trying not to kill wandering traders. Like, I don't mind wandering traders. I just wish that they would be quiet. And for some reason, I feel like so many spawn in this world. I've never seen so many wandering traders in my entire life. And he just doesn't stop yapping. He's a yapper. It's so annoying. I thought that those were only in Valorant, but apparently they're also here in Minecraft. And let's see how those look. I don't know if I like those being shorter, so maybe it'll depend on what it looks like on the outside. And oof, yeah, no, I think that we'll just leave that with no stairs. But while we're doing these windows, we might as well go home and grab some glass. I did not bring any over with me, so. Here we are once again, taking our little tiny boat trip across the lake. And honestly, I am so excited to see what this world is gonna look like and maybe like, you know, a few more long plays from now, just see how all of the builds fill this area out. It's gonna be so cool, I think. I know I'm the most excited to have like a florist, a bakery, a wine store. I think that'll be so cool.
Probably can include like the teas and the coffee and stuff from the tea mod in the bakery. So maybe like a cafe kind of bakery kind of thing. And then of course we'll have like a little fishing dock. And I was thinking we could have like a furniture store because we have so many different furniture mods. But then what else should we build up? Obviously like maybe like a little greenhouse for bees. And what else did I come over here for? I know we needed more diorite. Maybe we can grab some extra terracotta too, just in case we need it for the roof. And yeah, that magenta terracotta not going to help us. Well, it's the shingles that we had for the barn. I can't help but feel like I'm forgetting something. And I know I just said it out loud what I was going to get, but I don't remember what I said. We'll just keep building. I'm sure it'll come back to me. All right, back to working right here on our little beams in the back wall. And I'm just gonna try to tune out this wandering trader as much as possible. I realized that I could turn their spawns off, but I really don't want to just in case they have some of those cool flowers that are kind of rare from Biomes of Plenty. In particular, the one that I'm thinking of is like the little water blossom kind of thing. I think it's like a lotus. Um, I really, really want a bunch of those. So I don't know how to get them without the Wandering Trader. But if you guys know, let me know. All right, let's jump down and we'll get these walls filled in. I'm not 100% sure where I'm gonna put the windows on this wall or if I'm gonna do like a bay window. I am a big fan of a bay window. I don't know why. And especially if you are able to have it open like in a peaceful world or something or on like the second floor. That is like a real dream come true, you know? Oh, this is up one too high. Oops. That is a little bit awkward. I didn't need to put those blocks there. Okay, I just like zoned out for a second because I really didn't want to fix that in my brain, but I will fix that in just a second. Wait, actually, I do believe this is where the window would be going. Oh, this is awkward. I'm confused now. I'm, you know, I zoned out and then look what happens. My whole brain just stopped working. My partner would say frogcrafting.exe has crashed. But that's okay. Nothing a little bit of brain power can't fix. Okay, so we'll have a block there and a block here and a block there. And that'll leave these windows all correct on this side. And while we're up here, we might as well just take these blocks down. 
And I think it's a good time for a little baked potato break. Honestly, baked potatoes are one of my favorite ways to eat potatoes. I don't know if I'm the only one out there that's like a baked potato girly, but please let me know if you guys are baked potato eaters, what are your favorite toppings to go on a baked potato? There was this deli I used to go to in the city that I lived in that had like baked potatoes on their menu and they were so, so good. And there was this like vegetarian one that had like this like spicy cheese sauce and all sorts of like vegetables. But I'm also a big fan of like, you know, some like butter and cheddar and bacon on my baked potatoes, like a loaded baked potato. I'm not a big sour cream girly unless it's like fully mixed in, but you know, no hate to the sour cream girlies. But truly, I'm an all potato girly. I feel like there's just no form of potatoes that I do not like. Oh my god, wait, I just remembered I was supposed to get glass earlier. Oh, that's, um, we'll be back over there, I'm sure, for other things. We, we can get that later. Not a big deal. To separate the library room with the enchanting table from the reception area, I want to make another one of those kind of archways, and this will kind of match the one that we have outside, on the outside of the doorway, or on the outside of the walls, I should say. I'm not 100% convinced of this spot that it's in. I might have to put it one more block in so it doesn't block any of the actual library space. But we can make that decision when the time comes. I do like it at this moment in time where it is. And we'll, of course, do our classic little archway thing here. There we go. And then for here, I really want to do some kind of, let's say like a, you know, desk or so for like a receptionist area. I, I mean, I don't know if we're going to continue with the spruce stairs. Maybe we'll do something else, but just to have like an idea down for how much space we have. And it does look like this kind of works. There's enough space on the other side for like the entryway. Although, I mean, it's a little bit cramped, but what can you do? Okay, cleaned up my inventory a little bit, and now let's continue on. I'm gonna craft up some more stairs, and I'm also gonna craft up some slabs as well. And you know what? Probably a couple of trapdoors. We can go ahead and get some of the pattern on the sides and the back finished up now. So here we'll just continue on our pattern with our slabs and our stairs. I mean, no one's really going to see it on this side because of the hill there, but maybe the hill won't be there one day or maybe it'll be shallower or it'll have like a tunnel through it or something. Ah, the pond, my behated. All right, now I'm trying to envision in here where all of this stuff is going to go. Hmm. I definitely think we're going to have to move that. But let's get a couple of preliminary pieces of furniture in here just to confirm. So I kind of want like, yeah, one of these, like a spruce desk. That's pretty cheap to craft. So let's make a couple of these. And currently with the thing right there, we would have to have a desk there, which is a little bit off. Center, I don't really like that as much, I don't think, but let's get a couple more in here and then I'll see how I feel. 
So this is how I envisioned it to go, but that would be symmetrical. And that just looks a little bit crowded to me, like the chairs will be touching each other. Not the biggest fan of that. So I think we'll have to remove that and then maybe put those there. Oh, yeah, there we go. And we'll remove this one and replace it down right against the glazed terracotta. And then how do we make a chair? Like a spruce chair. Oh, that's very, very simple. We can absolutely make those. So let's get the spruce one. Definitely don't need 16 of these, but I'll grab like maybe 12 and that way we have enough room to like spread them out everywhere. We could put some at each like table. Although that looks a little bit overcrowded to me. Like I don't think four people could comfortably study at a table this small. So let's remove some of these chairs. And I think just having two at each table is probably a lot better. I think that looks a lot better. And I'm gonna hang up some temporary lanterns on this side as well. These aren't gonna stay there, but just for some extra lighting when it's getting dark. Because of how I had to build this, this is actually not centered on the inside, but on the outside it is centered and that's bothering me, but you know what, it's fine. Like out here, it looks good. And then on the inside, it's just a little bit weird, I guess. So yeah, we're definitely gonna have to remove this as well and move this back. I thought that earlier, but I guess it's good to know for sure now. And it's pretty easy to do. It's not like we built this out of obsidian or something. Although thinking about obsidian, we're probably gonna have to go get obsidian for our enchanting table, which we will do much later. Let's get like the build done first before we worry about the enchantment table. Wait, am I hearing things or is that two wandering traders out there? It is! That is so weird. When you actually want a wandering trader to spawn, they never spawn. But when you don't want them, there's 50 of them. Let's see if he has anything that I'm going to be interested in. And of course not. The huge clover petal is kind of interesting, but I don't think we need that now. Okay, I think next step up is working on the roof. So I'm gonna get a few blocks of stripped cherry ready as I wanna use a variant of stripped cherry, I think. And I want the layered one. So this one right here, I think this one looks cool. And then we'll make up some more of this pink terracotta as we'll need that. And then we'll need magenta terracotta. Probably also going to need this mangrove. Maybe get a little bit more of that. And the crimson, of course, we'll need. We'll need our spruce stairs. Mm, don't really know if we'll need anything else. Actually, it would probably be a good idea to get some leaves. So maybe we can go over there and get some cherry leaves and maybe some azalea leaves. If we have some azalea at home, I'll have to go check. 
But cherry leaves first because we already have a cherry tree that I've pretty much like half chopped all the leaves off already. And I just want a couple of these inside the enchanting area and on the house so that all the magical petals fall down. It'll give it a little bit of like... Since it's an enchanting area, I feel like just having a little bit of magic and a little bit of particles and stuff coming down is a really good thing. And if I had Silk Touch, I might be able to get a little bit of like Amethyst to put on there, but unfortunately we don't have Silk Touch yet. But we can always add to our enchanting area later. And you know what? I actually am going to like replant this rice here. Oh, it already replanted. Oh, okay. Okay, I see. Oh, this is the stuff we had on Castaways. Okay, so if we chop that on a cutting board, we'll also get like the the stuff you can use to make the rope. Anyways, I don't need too many leaves, so I'll just try to get maybe like a stack or two because we do have a bunch of saplings already, so replanting a cherry tree is not a problem. The more annoying part for us is going to be getting the flowering azalea leaves. I wish that there was like a better way to farm them, but they are so beautiful and they are so, so useful. So we're going to have to definitely get some. I also feel like they are going to fit that kind of like in between from like oak leaves to... The cherry leaves, like, each part has, like, a green or pink or purple, and I feel like that all kind of works together. That's almost two stacks. That's definitely enough. Let's head over to the base, and let's see if we have any azalea bushes that we can plant. Ah, uh, home again back into our little messy storage room although it's not that messy oh i pay i think across the lake this is not activated must be when we're only like on this side or like when we go to the barn or so that this is working maybe we'll take some spore blossoms over and there we go our azalea let me grab these other shears too because we can combine shears if you guys didn't know this, you can combine your old shears as long as they're not enchanted in a crafting table. And I think we'll just keep making our little rooted dirt out here. But rooted dirt's not really what we're after. We're really after these beautiful azalea leaves. The rooted dirt just comes over as more of a bonus than anything else. I really wish I had a hoe with efficiency five right now because I would just get all of the leaves and then compost the other ones, but it's fine that I don't. We're going to get that, you know, silk touch hoe eventually. If not from the enchantment table, we'll definitely get a silk touch villager with the easy villagers mod. And I'm thinking we can keep some villagers over with the enchanting area and maybe some anvils as well. But it does make me really miss having, you know silk touch on all my hoes it's just so nice for collecting leaves the shears method is also okay it just takes a while you know oh that's nice it didn't touch all the other leaves so those ones can still despawn oh there's a lot right here in this one little bunch all right i'm gonna shut up and y'all enjoy the vibes while we collect some leaves
Wow, the house is looking really, really good from over here. I love that angle. But you know what? I just realized that I forgot to get the glass again for the windows. Oh my goodness. Well, let's start getting this roof on. I think we're gonna do kind of a simple stair roof so it doesn't become too tall. It is already quite a tall building. And let's start with a stair right here. Although, actually I think I'm gonna go one up with that. Otherwise it's gonna cover up our beams and I don't want it to cover like the flowering azalea logs. Yeah, let's go from here and then any weirdness we can always fix on the inside later. We don't have to worry about that right now. Then let's get a little bit of this going up so we can kind of have an idea of what it's going to look like. I don't know why, but I always come to the other side before I finish going up in the middle. I'm sure if you guys have watched me build, you have noticed that by now. I just can't like finish one side without bringing up the other side, at least like the same amount. Let's make some more stairs because we're going to need a bunch of them. And we'll place a dirt here and then our stairs and then we'll bring it over the same way. And now that we've brought the roof up to meet in the middle on the other side, now I can finally finish it. But I have to get like some progress on every side before I can finish one side, if that makes sense. I don't know why I'm like that. We'll just put our little finishing touch on the roof here, which I think I'm going to do with some slabs and we'll just bring it over to the other side. I really want to get better at doing some like fancier roofs someday. You know, like the kind that Brooke does, like that look all like magical and elvish and stuff. I really, really want to get better at that. But for now, I am only good at spruce slab roof and, and barely. That's like barely. Now the frame of the main roof is on, so let's start getting some of these blocks in here. And we'll start on the front just because I think it's a little bit easier so we can look at it from the front. So we're going to start with a nice little crimson stem. And of course, we're going to strip this once I'm done. I just don't know exactly how far I want this to go yet, but we'll figure it out. 
There might be some unplacing and replacing. Touching on all of the stripped crimson, we're gonna add some magenta terracotta. And that was a lot. 16 was definitely not enough. We're gonna have to make some more. But basically we're gonna be doing a little gradient from the stripped crimson into, you know, mangrove and then into cherry. And I think with the blocks that we have right now that we can make this possible. Let's just bring this back over. Oh, whoops, that was supposed to be mangrove. My bad. All right, now for real this time, bringing in the mangrove wood. We'll get that all stripped. And we want this to be touching all of the cherry. So maybe something like that. Although it does kind of look very, very like long and awkward here with this. We might have to adjust that a little bit later, but that's fine. For now, we're just going to grab a little bit more of our pink terracotta here. Well, maybe a little bit more mangrove just to kind of make it on a diagonal like the other ones. I definitely think that this is going to need some adjustment, but it's okay. It's just our first trial. We're going to, we've already made peace with the fact that we're going to have to break blocks and place them again. Not a big deal. We're going to add in some of that cherry wood and also some strip cherry as well. And this is going to have kind of like a fuchsia to red to pink gradient. That's what at least I'm hoping for with this entire thing. All right, so let's sleep and then we'll see what it looks like. Into our trusty boat. And let's just take a double check. Um, I like it. It does need some work though, especially like over there. It's a little tiny bit awkward, but that's okay. I like the colors. It ties in well with the skeleton farm down below and that's a good thing. That's important. I wanted it to look a little bit similar. So I'm glad that it has those elements. Need some more pink dye, so we're just gonna get some more of these peonies. There we go. Okay, definitely gonna have to fix that part. I wonder if I can water bucket up into there. Am I doing this swim? Yeah, I'm doing the swimming animation. <laughs> I love that. That's one of my favorite animations of Minecraft. Let's just cover all of these right now with oak because um, later on we can come and fix them. I don't think it really matters too much.
All right, now to fix up this roof. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some of this crimson out. Fill this in a little bit more with some of this magenta terracotta. We'll take some of the magenta out. Bring out more of the stripped mangrove. And we'll get that stripped down. Remove some of this strip mangrove and put some of our pink terracotta in. I think that might be a little bit better. Oh, whoops. I um, did not need to open my map there. Sorry. I like this a lot better. The mangrove is broken up a lot better. It looks a little bit more organic. The shape is better. I like that. Oh, that llama is just vibing. Love that for him. Now to make a similar design over on this side of the roof. We'll just power through this really quickly. Also, it's been about two hours since I started recording and I just want to give your, you know, video reminder to take care of yourself. Have you eaten today? Have you had your water? Have you taken your meds? Have you taken a break? Have you stretched if it's possible? Make sure that you're taking care of your body. Make sure that you're trying to take care of yourself in the best ways that you possibly can. I know it's hard sometimes, but we got to try to nourish the body that we have. So that way, the body that we have will still take care of us as well. I get asked pretty frequently, how do I, you know, have long gaming sessions like this or long streams? And something that's really helped me is having scheduled breaks, scheduled times where you stand up, get out of your chair, you know, do something else for a little bit. When I'm recording, I actually have a little timer on my phone that goes off like underneath my screen that uh, basically just alerts me like, hey, make sure you have a, a stretch break or make sure that you take a drink. And um, that's been very helpful for me. But during streams, my chat always is reminding me to hydrate and to stretch. But they also remind me to check my posture and my posture has been, um, well, pretty questionable sometimes. I won't lie. But having a little bit of a reminder sometimes is just all we need to remember to take care of ourselves. So I hope that this reminder finds you well. And I hope that however many things that you can do to take care of yourself today that are possible that you do them. All right, let's see. This is looking like a little ice cream on the map. It's like extremely pink and red and I don't know exactly how to feel. I've never had something like this before, but I think I like it. Oh, and this does remind me, I have installed the free cam mod so that way we can pop out of our body like this and kind of fly away detached, almost as if we're like a spectator in the world so we can check out what the builds look like. And I think that this looks good. I think it's fine. Um, I hope you guys don't mind that I have this mod installed. I use this in my hardcore world as well, just to check out my builds. I think it's very, very helpful. But I will be using this from now on here and there just to check out the builds, just to see how it's looking. That way we don't have to always jump up and down. And I mean, it is modded after all, so we might as well take advantage of a mod. I think the next thing that we're going to do up here is get in a ceiling for the main library room. That way we don't have to look at how chaotic the roof looks, but we're definitely going to need some more of this like spruce. So I'm actually going to hydrate and rest my vocal cords for a second because I have been almost nonstop talking for two hours at this point. Speak to y'all in a minute.
You know, I was thinking we could keep these here just so that I wouldn't have to look at this ugly spot, but I don't know what I'm going to put up here yet, and I don't know if I'm going to bring the magenta terracotta from the roof down or not, so instead I'm going to simply ignore that for now. But what I do want to do is get this part figured out and get some like beams in here. Didn't realize that that wasn't stripped from earlier. And I tend to do these like little tutor lines sometimes when I need something to do up here because I never really know what to do in these spots. So we can alternate here some logs and some maybe some white concrete and calcite and stuff. This also looks good if you do like alternating stripped log colors or just regular logs if you want to do that. And we'll just throw down all the stuff that we have. Doesn't have to be in any specific order, no specific pattern or anything. The wandering trader is driving me mad. And there's our final blocks and that whole thing looks good. No one's really going to see that from the outside on the side of the building. And this part, a little tiny bit awkward. Let me pick this block up. Um, and I guess we'll just bring that back in. We're going to have to ignore that for now. Now this edge of the roof is going to be a little bit weird. I think I want to try to do slabs here but I don't 100% know yet because I don't want this roof to be quite as tall as the main roof. And it's much smaller, so even if we did stairs, it would still be, you know, shorter, not as tall. But we'll see what we're working with once we get more into this. Let's try like a stair here on the edge. I meant a slab, sorry. And we're gonna bring this out another block so it fully covers the roof. So we'll go up by one slab. Maybe like a stair, like maybe instead of a slab, we'll go upside down stair there. I don't know if I like how that looks, but we'll go with it for now. I always second guess the roof, always. And maybe we can kind of curve this a little bit since we'd have the stair there. But then again, I don't 100% know if I like that. Let's just see if I put this in here, what is it going to look like? It'll go to like right there. 
obviously on this rung, this will be fine. Oh, you know what? These are kind of opposite of each other, but whatever. No one's even going to know that. Only, only we will know that. It doesn't really matter. Let's just get all of these filled in really quickly. That way we don't have to worry about it anymore for the other side of the roof. Last little bits to fill in here. And we'll do the rest with our concrete powder. And just give those a quick wash. And I guess now to go downstairs. So maybe we go over here in one of the corners. That way we can fall into the chair like we did earlier. And we'll just cover those up. I didn't hit the chair for some reason, but that's okay. All right, let's pull her up to the top of the roof again. And I think, you know, now that I've been kind of thinking about it, I don't think that we should overcomplicate this roof. I think that we should leave it with just some stairs. It'll be a lot easier. I won't have to go make framed blocks. Although, I mean, framed blocks are a reason that we are excited about this world. I just think for this video, you know, there's already so much going on. It's so tall. Maybe a little bit of a simpler roof is better with like the gradient. Of course, that's not going to stop me from trying one more time to make this work. But, uh, if we put this here and we put that there, it gets like a little bit of a rounded shape, but it is, I don't think it's going to work. I want to try. I know the stairs will work. It's so hard for me to give up. <laughs> the, th the idea that I originally had. Does anyone else have that? Is it just me? Like, unable to let go? Yeah, and right here is where we run into the trouble because these are not slabs. We can make them slabs, but they're not slabs. So even if we put these here and we put the cherry next to it, you won't see it because we would have to make framed blocks. Do I want to make framed blocks? That's a good question. I'm running out of wood, I feel. So maybe it'll be better if we just save on wood and just do the stair thingy like we normally would.
well, you know what? You can't say I didn't try. I tried a bunch of things to make it work. I was a little bit quiet there for a minute. I'm so sorry. My brain was um, working in overtime to try to get it to go the way that I wanted it to go, but without framed slabs, it wasn't gonna work. And I just don't have a lot of extra wood right now to put into framed slabs. Gonna have to do a lot of mining or some wood off camera, I think in between episodes or maybe we can do a stream where we just gather some resources. Little bit more pink terracotta to finish this out here. And this side we're not gonna make all the shapes on. I just think it looks better with because it's so small, it looks better like this. And actually, well, besides this, which we have to fix, obviously, I think that it looks good when we pop it into here in free cam. I, th I think that's fine. We still have so much work to do on this house though. Oh my goodness, there is detailing, there is the interior, there is getting all the leather for all of the bookshelves that I'm gonna be placing in here. Once you guys see how much leather we're gonna need, um, I think everyone's gonna be a little bit shocked. I'm gonna have to walk my dog around so many cows, you know? Also, for anyone who didn't get that reference, it's just a little inside joke for my Twitch streams that Sometimes people get sad when you have to, you know, collect leather from the cows. So I usually would go to a BRB screen and say that I was going to walk my dog and then do it off screen. And then when I came back, I would have leather and there would be no cows. So anyone didn't know what that meant. That's what it means. I also don't like that we have to kill cows to get leather. It always makes me feel bad. So I totally get it. But enough about killing cows, and let's just get focused on finishing up this house. I don't want this video to be like five hours long, and I know in the editing process, what I've already edited, I've cut out a little bit of the trip from the nether, and a little bit here and there, like going across the lake to get stuff, because for some reason I am always forgetting something, you know? Like the glass that I still haven't gotten now that I'm looking at the window. But I hope you guys don't mind that I cut out those things. Just, I don't know if they really add anything to the long play. And you guys have seen me walk home. You know what I mean? Sometimes I just feel like, you know, focusing on the build and the resource gathering might be a little bit better. Or like the video itself. And I don't really make tutorials, but... If anyone's following along, I think it might be a little bit better for the the total experience of watching a long play if we cut out some of that extra stuff, you know? But if you have any opinions on that, and, or if you want me to leave in like walking home or anything, give me your opinions in the comments. Let me know how you guys are feeling. I want you guys to enjoy the long plays as much as I enjoy making them. I really, really have a lot of fun. Even though I sometimes run out of things to talk about, I still really enjoy making these kinds of videos. Wait, is this guy also new? Yeah, I don't remember seeing this guy. I would have remembered having like a gross spider egg. And there's another guy in there. Oh man, wandering trader takeover. Hey guys, the library is not open yet, okay? We are not ready for business. We are still decorating and setting up.
I really, really, really want to use these spore blossoms, but I don't know if I want to use them in here. Oh, but you know what? I do need to get... And just making sure that I didn't accidentally grab it, I didn't. I need to go get the glass. I think now would be a good time to go get it before we start decorating. That way it can feel like, you know, the full outside is done. And was that like a bat flying around? Anyone else find that like super strange? That was like really weird. Anyways, house is looking amazing. The view across the lake to see our house is amazing. I love this world so much. All right, let's get the glass. Um, I definitely know we're gonna need these playing, or these paints, sorry. And we can also dye these other ones also pink and then put them into our chipped table. And there we go. Those ones are the matching ones. Let's head back over and we'll fill all of those in in the walls. Oh my gosh. Ah! Please! Please leave me alone, thank you. Alright, heading in, let's do some glass here. And I want to do that, like, panes on the side to make it look like it's like a bay window kind of thing. The good thing about chipped glass panes is that they do not break like regular glass panes do. Like if you break them without silk touch, I mean. And that was all of the glass panes that we had. Okay. So these ones are going to be full blocks anyways, because I don't want that thing to happen. You know, like when you place a block next to a pane and it gets that like little edge. I don't want that to happen. Um, but can I make these into panes? I cannot. That's right. I had to make them into panes before. Um, and put the panes in the glass table. That's okay though, because we can also just do a full block window here as well because I don't know how much of this will be touching the enchanting area. And for anyone who didn't know what I meant when I said that earlier, this like little thing that happens when there's a full block touching, I'm just avoiding that. Or sorry, when there's a block touching the glass pane, I'm just avoiding that. But we had the perfect amount of glass panes and glass blocks. So that was actually really lucky and really clutch. I suppose now we can probably start making some chiseled bookshelves and I'm going to use this cherry wood because I don't really think I need any other cherry wood, maybe for some accents later, but I have more over at the house. Now I want chiseled bookshelves because I want to be able to store our books that we're going to be able to get from the enchant table over here. But also in general, I just really like that chiseled bookshelves just change up the way that you can make library spaces in your world now because they add a little bit of personalization. I mean, it's not too much, but it's just not a wall of just bookshelves and empty looms anymore, which is good for me. We also have alternative bookshelves in the chip mod, so I'm going to have to remember that later. Although by the time later comes around, I will probably forget and we all know this. All right, in between here, let's add some kind of beams just to match what's on the outside. And it'll separate our little bookshelves here pretty nicely. And then I think we could put some ladders on there. Sort of make it look like you can climb up and grab the book you want from the top shelf. For now, we're just going to stick the lanterns right here i'm sure that we're going to replace those later with something else something a little bit more aesthetically pleasing but let's get those little um ladders made up i need some more planks really quickly for some more sticks 
<laughs> I actually uh, sometimes feel like very weird when I'm <laughs> making long plays like this because I'm just talking to myself and every once in a while I look over at my dog and my dog is like, who are you talking to? I, I just don't think he gets YouTube, but that's okay. He enjoys watching YouTube, so. Do you guys notice your pets watching TV? Because a lot of people tell me that their cats watch my streams and stuff with them. And I don't know why, but I feel like cats really enjoy my voice. Like, I, I'm a comfort to cats. But at the same time, it's kind of unfair because I'm allergic to cats in real life. And so they can enjoy me, but I can never enjoy them. I mean, not to mention, I do have two cats. But, of course, like, I just am used to being allergic to them. So it's fine. But a lot of people post their cat pictures and dogs and horses and all sorts of animals in my Discord. I love seeing the pets channel. It makes me so happy. And let's take another little baked potato break. Oh, I'm actually kind of getting hungry in real life. I might take a break pretty soon. And it'll probably be a good thing as well because... I don't think we can make much more progress until we get the bookshelves in. And to do that, we're gonna have to just kind of breed up the cows and kill them. But there's a lot of empty space in there and I think we're probably gonna need like 50 or 60 bookshelves. So this might take a while. So I might have to like AFK for a bit for leather and bring y'all back. I think that'll make the most sense, otherwise you guys are going to have like a huge just compilation of me absolutely wrecking cows over and over again, which is just like ridiculous. And this video will probably be like eight hours long. Um, let's grab some of these little decorations that we have that we made for the other spawner room thingy. And we do have 52 leather already, so how much can we make with that? Yeah. 56 bookshelves, or 56 books, sorry. A little bit more leather. So we've got 67 books. That just doesn't seem like it's gonna be a lot. That's like half of what we need. Especially because I'd also like to fill all of the chiseled bookshelves with some books. I mean, they don't have to be completely full, but I'd like to add some books into them, you know? And we're gonna need our diamonds for an enchanting table. Yeah, I don't have any obsidian, so let's grab our diamond pickaxe, the one that has durability on it still. And I think there's a lava lake. Oh yeah, there's one right over there. All right, it's morning. Let's head over to the cows. We'll breed them up one time and then do a little bit of dog walking. <clears throat> and then we'll go get our obsidian. We'll make our enchantment table and maybe we can get looting. That way we can fill all of our bookshelves, but I don't know if we'll be that lucky, but we'll try. I forgot to bring wheat over, so we're gonna have to grab what, what we've got from over here. Not much of it has grown. I think we're just outside of like the radius or the render distance or whatever that you can have for crops growing. In any case, let me breed these guys up and I'll see you in a minute. All right, a little bit later, we have some extra levels. Well, only one extra level. And we got 20 leather from that. So not too bad. That is only enough for 20 books or six bookshelves. So we are gonna have to... <clears throat> walk my dog with any cows that we see on the way. 
And you know, while we're in this village, let's just see, did I miss any books or any leather or anything while we were coming through here? Anything that can be used for our enchantment table or as decorations over there. But I think that we cleared this village pretty well out. There aren't even that many villagers left here because, well, um, they were all falling down this cave where all of the bells were. There were a bunch of zombies and skeletons and creepers and stuff down there. There were some iron golems down there too, but they didn't really do much to help, I don't think. Oh yeah, this is what I was talking about earlier, that cave. There's like crops and stuff down there. I don't really know what this is supposed to be, but it was like a death hole for all the villagers. And I'm just putting it out there. I did not build that. That was generated within this village. I give up for now. I don't think that they're going to ever have anything that we need. So let's just head over and grab the obsidian that we need. If worse comes to worse, we can always get a Fletcher villager with our little villager breeder and we can get emeralds and then trade with a librarian for bookshelves. I'm hoping it doesn't come to that though. All right, let's pick up all of this obsidian and then we can make our enchantment table within our backpack. There we go. All right, let's get our bookshelf recipe going. Okay, here's like an alternative recipe. going to do this one, but how do I get an empty oak bookshelf? I don't really no it doesn't really give me a crafting recipe for that i think that this does have other types of bookshelves though so i'm gonna make sure that i use oak here as i want them to match the chiseled bookshelves this backpack by the way is a mess right now i'm so sorry for everyone that has to see this i promise i will fix it at some point 21 bookshelves though, not bad. We can make one more if we just get a little bit more oak. Oh, look at the little stacks of books. This is cute. Oh my gosh, that's adorable. Okay, never mind. We're not making another bookshelf. We're getting a stack of books. Oh, and that's right. We do have a frog that I went and yoinked from a swamp on the last stream. I think it would be cute if we used the frog as like a little librarian, although I do have an idea for later on in the world to add player statues into the world once we have some more built. But for a temporary librarian, I think a frog will do well. Wait, is that fox just sitting there? Oh, is that a flower? That's so cute. Hello. You're not scared of me, are you? Wait, maybe I'll want this. Do you want that? Trade? <laughs> Thank you, little fox. I'm going to put this right outside the library. This is the fox's flower. Nice. 
Now on the way back over, I've killed a couple more cows and I have crafted up some more bookshelves and another little decorative book set I'll show you guys in a minute. But first, the fox's rose. Oh, that was so sweet. That like made my day. All right, let's get out our bookshelves and let's start by placing down our enchanting table bookshelves. So that'll be over here, I think. So the enchantment table has to go there and these will all come up and then I think we need two there, right? And that's not enough levels. Um, if we put one there, will that fix it? Okay, it does. No one will even notice. No one, no one even sees that. And now we can just start filling in all these empty spaces. And this is going to look amazing once we get all of the leather, which we currently are not going to be lucky enough to have. Fortune 2. I didn't I didn't bring any lapis. Um We'll get that in a second. Actually, let's get a doorway in here so the wandering trader can't go in anymore. Do I want to do a crimson door? No, you know what? I think I want to do the same door we have on the other house, the cherry door. I really liked that one. And then of course we'll change it into the overgrown cherry door. Let's go ahead and place our door in the normal spot. Oh, I love how that looks. It's so nice. All right, I'm gonna drop a couple of things that I don't really need in this one, like all of those w weird random wools that I got from killing the cows. And let's see, can we make this work as a desk here? Um, no, I don't think so. But you know what? This would be a cute desk in here as like a solo study desk, actually. So maybe I can put it there. Oh, nope, not there. What about here? Oh yeah, that works better. And then they can have a chair there in the middle. Perfect. Maybe we can make this a two wide desk instead of a one wide desk. That's if, of course, I could ever place the blocks correctly. But maybe this is like a study group desk. You know, if you have friends to study with you, everyone gets their own place. Maybe something like that. I definitely want to use these paper lanterns in here as I feel like they bring just a really like relaxing soft vibe. And the lanterns sort of feel like a grocery store fluorescent lamp and I just don't want that. Even though I will say I do love lanterns, just not at this moment. Okay, let's take these little books. We can put some there. Oh my gosh, that's so cute. And then maybe some of these books right here next to the enchant table. Oh, I love it. Let's add a couple of flower pots around. Oh my gosh, I really wish that these wandering traders would just despawn already. I'm not going to trade with you guys. Now for out here, maybe we can make like a counter instead of a desk or just a table. That is kind of nice. But I don't know if I like the color enough. Maybe we can try the pink one. Oh, that's from the handcrafted mod. Oh, you have to make those a different way. Oh, shoot. Okay. And for this one, you need nether quartz. Of course you do. Yep, of course. 
I don't want to go back to the nether right now, so we will make something else. Well, okay, I guess with those planks that we made, those like little things, we can make these pink desks. We can try this. The worst thing that happens is we don't like it and then we can always use these pink tables elsewhere. I don't know if I like that length. Maybe, maybe less, just one less. Yeah, I think that's a little bit better. We'll block that off with a trap door for safety purposes, I guess. Let's add some flower pots here and we're going to go quickly. Hopefully that guy doesn't have a trident or anything. I thought I had the chairs out there in the backpack, but they were in my backpack, not that backpack. I saw that there was this like typewriter in the candlelight dinner mod, and I feel like this could really look like a little cash register if we put it here so you can check out your books at the typewriter. But we're gonna have to go get some redstone, so back home we go. And you don't have a trident, so just please leave me alone. The new antler hat, I'm not the biggest fan of. It's not my favorite. We'll put it away in case there's ever an instance where I want to wear it, but I don't think so. All right, let's craft up that repeater. We're gonna need some redstone torches and some redstone. There we go, we've got some stone and we can make our typewriter and let's place it down. Oh my gosh, it's so cute. I do know that there's a way that you can type stuff on there, but I don't know how, but I think it involves paper. So we'll take some paper with us as well. Let's gather up just a few more things that we're gonna need for the build before we go back over. Hopefully this will be the last time we have to come back over. We had a couple of those pink decorations. Yeah, these like town planter things, I'm definitely gonna bring those over. Looking at the house from here, it's definitely coming along. I really like it. I I think it needs a chimney there. So we're gonna definitely have to add one of those. And maybe we can add a dormer window as well. The front just looks a little bit like, or the roof, sorry, looks a little bit awkward. Oh, and before I forget, we're just gonna get some lapis. That way we can actually enchant because I'm really curious what kind of enchants we're gonna get on our tools and armor and stuff. Well, probably won't enchant the armor, but at least on our tools, I'm really curious what we're gonna get.
Oh, and you know what else we should make while we're over here? We should make a couple of trader blocks from the Easy Villagers mod. That way we can add a place for them already in the house. So we need some glass panes. And yeah, we'll, we'll just make all six. That's fine. I think I'm actually just going to incorporate them into the wall with the bookshelves. I know that sounds like a little bit weird, but... There's just not a lot of other space that we have up there. I guess we could use the attic. But I actually think it's cool because we can just store the traders right next to like copies of their enchanted books in the chiseled bookshelves. I, I like this idea. It's not weird, is it? It's I hope it's not weird. Is that another new wandering trader? Does anyone know which mod is making these wandering traders spawn so much? Because I'm going, um, a little bit wild over here. I just want them to stop. Can I use the paper here? Doesn't look like it. I thought you could use this to type stuff, but maybe it has to be a specific kind of paper. How are you in here? Anyways, let's scatter around these traders really quickly. We can just add a couple here, a couple there, one here. And then let's put one, yeah, we can put one over here as well. There we go. I have a one enchanted book that we can just put there. It's a sharpness two book. Probably won't use it, so it can just stay over here as decoration. And then we've got some planters. Please move. Man, I hate this guy. If you don't get out of here, you're gonna get murdered. Just I'm warning you now. Let's move the desk. There we go. I feel like the building phase is always like a little bit overwhelming to me, but it's not as overwhelming as the decoration phase. I feel like this phase takes me so, so long. And maybe that's just because I'm not that good at Minecraft interiors and I get nervous and I feel weird and then I don't like them and I have to change them a million times. And in modded, you have so many block options that it's almost like overwhelming. Whereas in vanilla, you know, you sort of just make kind of variations of what you know works although some people that i see on like instagram and pinterest and stuff some people are so smart and they have like the best interior design skills i've ever seen those people aren't me though Do I like that painting? Oh, well, I guess I don't have a choice. I guess it's that painting or nothing. We'll just leave that there. Because being in a library is like being on a magical mountain. I don't really know what that meant after I said that out loud, but we're just going with it, okay? We're just gonna pretend that it meant something. Wait, that painting was kind of cute though. Oh, but I do like the sunflower. Oh wait, this one's cute. I like that one. Being in a library is like seeing a sunset. That also doesn't really make sense. This one's okay. Oh, that one's a little bit scary. I don't like that one. I don't necessarily want that one either. Something cute. Oh, that's kind of cute with the windmill and the wheat. I like that. Um, wh what was that? Okay. Now, now the paintings are trolling. Okay, that's also scary. Can we get something nice? Okay, that's nice. There we go. Oh my gosh, there were some weird ones there. All right, well... Honestly, I think I don't want to do too much else, so we'll do so a little bit of enchanting. Efficiency four. Oh, and fortune three. Nice. Unbreaking three, efficiency four. Okay, that's fine. Sharpness three. Not the best. 
Unbreaking 3, even worse. Efficiency 3, Unbreaking 3. Okay. Well, I can't really do much else until we get a... Well, until we get all the leather that we need. So I'm going to go AFK, get some food, and breed the cows, and do my thing. And then, yeah, clear out some of this inventory space. And then I'm going to get that all handled so we can fill in this whole area, fill in all those bookshelves as well. And I'll bring you guys back in a moment. All right, y'all, I'm back. I got some more levels and I killed way too many cows. Just genuinely way too many. I have like four stacks of beef on me and yeah, I don't think we're gonna run out of steak anytime soon. I also got a bunch of this beige patterned wool, which I think we could probably use to make some like, I don't know, designs, maybe a rug inside the library. It does give me like quilted comfy vibes, so. I actually really like that we have a bunch of this available to us right now. We can put away the blue wool for now though, as we are not going to be needing that for the build today, but maybe in the future we'll use that. We'll put a couple of these things away. We'll put our chests away. Oh, and it looks like we did get a bunch of the moss and the spore blossoms as well, so that's really good. And then we can also just put away a bunch of this stuff that we don't need anymore. So let me take a moment and kind of sort this stuff out. Then we'll go back and decorate. A few minutes later, I've got all the bookshelves that we're going to need. And I've got the stuff to make up our chimney as I'm going to make another deep slate chimney so it matches the starter house. But let me go pick those up really quick because these were pretty expensive to make. Let's just top up on our sugarcane supply really quickly since it's all grown in again. And here we are, ready to decorate our little library once again. Oh, and the petals when you walk in are so good. We're going to fill in all the rest of these empty spaces with some bookshelves, which we only needed 13. I probably should have counted before I crafted all of those into bookshelves. And let's see, we have a bunch of paper here. But 15 books is not going to cut it, honestly. I definitely want one of those as well. I think that this like little blank paper pile showing that somebody's going to study is kind of cute. And now we can just start filling in our bookshelves with the books that we have. And we're probably going to have to break down our other bookshelves. Oh, that's right. You can place books with like the supplementaries mod, right? Oh, that's cute there, like leaning against the other bookshelf. I love that. We're gonna have to break some of these down for some extra books, but that's okay because we can always just get more oak. It's very easy. And now that we have a skeleton farm, we have so much bone meal as well. And also placing the books in the chiseled bookshelves is such a satisfying sound. I really, really enjoy that sound so, so much. Now, not every single bookshelf has to be full of books. There can be a couple that have just like one or two. That's not a big deal. As long as they have a little bit of variation, they don't all look exactly the same. I'm happy with it. Oh, <laughs> just wanted to get that one out of there. Make that look a little bit different. Too many green books in a row. 
That's a little bit better. All right, now let's add in a comfy carpet. I kind of want to have one over here in the entryway, just make sure it looks good. And then if it does look good, we'll carry another one into the area, like the study area. That's kind of cute, right? Yeah, I think it's a good color. It's like creamy and not too, too different, you know? It's getting to that time of the video again where I just don't know what to say, so enjoy the vibes, enjoy the decorating. I will check in and talk if I feel like it's necessary. Oh, whoops, didn't mean to go down there. Let's jump off there so that doesn't happen again. Why does this rug kind of sort of look like a jelly donut? We're just going to ignore that though, okay? I do want to add some more decorations from the cluttered mod. Oh, this open book would be good. So that's just a book and a paper. So somebody can be like actively studying over here at this desk. Oh, actually we should switch that the other way. They are sitting from that way. That makes sense. Oh, there's like a sketchbook. That kind of looks like you're gonna take notes. So we need a book and quill and then an ink sack. So that's gonna be feathers and two ink sacks. All right, let's go get that stuff really quickly. Hello, any squids around? Looks like there's some, yep, there's one. Oh, I always feel bad about doing this, I'm sorry. Hello squids, I'm so sorry. Can you give me two so I don't have to kill another one? No, okay, well. I guess I will have to kill another squid. I'm so sorry. Uh, you look good. You look like you want to give me at least two. Nope. Doesn't matter. Two is all we need. So let's go over and grab some feathers. And I know that there's some chickens on the other side of the barn somewhere. For some reason, when I was decorating the house, I needed eggs for something. I don't 100% remember why. Oh, I think it was for the cake. Yeah, I think we had to get eggs for the cake, so. Anyways, yeah, over here there was a bunch of chickens and well, now, now I'm gonna end up killing them. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Oh, I feel bad. Any others? Hey, I just, I'm gonna steal your egg. And can I just uh, have one second here? I just really need, yeah, I just need some feathers. We got two. Sorry. Okay, we've got our sketchbook and let's see, what else can we make? Card index, I don't know if I want that. Um paper stack oh okay we can make that as well 
So like someone's doing their homework and then someone has a bunch of paper that, you know, they're about to write on. I love that. But that does mean that we're going to have to kill another squid. So unfortunately, we're going to have to dive back in that water and mess one up. Oh, and you know what? Before we go in the water, I actually just had an idea. What if I also go get one of those backpacks we're not using? We can bring one of those small ones over. We could put like the backpacks next to the table. We could store our lapis in there. But I mean, just to, for the idea that like, you know, the students have their backpacks, you know, on the floor or whatever. So this one will be our student backpack. And actually, I'd like to change it into a red backpack because I don't know. Red just feels like school to me. Cyan doesn't feel as school ish to me. Oh, OK. That's interesting. It goes through like multiple different phases of dye. And on the way there, we're going to get a squid. Like I mentioned, I ate food, so the brain is finally braining. I'm not forgetting this time. And yep, that one is more than enough. We'll have our papers and then our paper stack with the writing on it. We love that. If anyone is thinking of using this mod, the cluttered mod, Genuinely, I just want to say probably one of my favorite mods that I've found in the last like six months or so. Like genuinely, I think I might add this to my Twitch Mizuno's world if it like my chat is down for it because I think it'll just help improve my builds so much. And actually, I would love to like go on a long like talk about that how excited I am about my Twitch world, but that'll be eventually. Maybe next video I'll go on like a little rant about it. Well, not like a rant, but you guys know what I mean. Like a, you know, off on a tangent. There we go. Oh my gosh, the sketchbook is so cute. Okay, now seeing this all together, I'd really like a drink to be there. Because it sort of looked like a drink cup. I wonder if I have any like placeable like cup of coffee or something. I know we do have coffee, but I don't think it's placeable. Yeah, and I don't think there's any like other kind of drinks or anything that you can place. Oops, accidentally disabled my shaders there by hitting K. Bakery has some jams that are placeable, but I don't think that there's any drinks. Meadow doesn't have any drinks. Just cheese. Oh, we should make that though. We should have like a cheese and wine store. Ooh, those flower pots might be nice though. We'll come back to that. I know that the Vinery mod has drinks that you can place, but they're all wine related. And I don't know, there's just something about that. Doesn't seem right to have wine in a library. I mean, I'm sure if it's a personal library and you're just reading your own books, that's fine. But for here, I think not. Oh my gosh, the pancake stack is so cute. I love that. Yeah, I don't see what I'm looking for. That's okay. You know what? We're just going to use that as a coffee cup. There we go. All right, over here, I'm just going to add a little bit of shelving and add some leaves hanging down just to give a little bit of ambiance in the room. Of course, your girl has to have leaves everywhere. It's just a fact of nature at this point. And the particles are going to drop down on the enchantment table and they're going to give us all their magical power to get fortune three and all the other enchants that we want and need. And actually, I want to make a couple of chains here as well, because I think that the chains will be really good for like hanging up these paper lanterns. We can like have them hanging from chains. I, rope would probably also be good here, but I don't have any rope on me right now, so chains it is. Just 
just gonna make a couple of extra paper lanterns. We'll just make two more. We need a red one and we need a magenta one. And we, of course, we're gonna need two more chains. Oh, that's right. I didn't dye them. I just zoned out mid mid sentence. Oops. Sorry. If you guys have known noticed me doing that, I'm so sorry. It's not my intention. All right. Let's hang these up. Oh my goodness. They are so cute and they bring actually the perfect vibe. It's kind of muted lighting. It's not too much. I actually really like them. Okay, let's put our extra bookshelves here maybe. And then, ooh, maybe we can make like a little bit of shelving up top. Oh, I can't make um slabs or trapdoors out of those. Okay, that's fine. We have a lot of spruce still. And let's hang some spruce trapdoors, like a big shelf from here. And then we can place some stuff up there, like some bookshelves. Maybe some leaves. Oh, we could do some chests as well. Maybe a barrel. But before we go there, let me put these signs here. We'll put them on like the flowers hanging down. So it kind of looks like it's a flower box. Oh, and I guess we should put in our librarian too. So let's grab um, a couple of, you know what? Some fences, yeah. I couldn't think of the word for it. I know it if I see it, but I always want to say gate, even though I want, I mean fence. So down here, we'll have a little spruce fence. Um, I just got to get out of here really quick. Let me up. <laughs> okay, I'm fine. So we'll put that there. We'll put our frog down. Hi, Mr. Librarian. We'll put that there. And you know what? We have some extra stacked spruce. We'll put that there. Stack that up so he can't fall in. Wait, did it? Is it right? Where'd it go? I thought I, I thought I messed it up. Did I not mess it up? Um. All right, hold on. Oh. No, it was it was correct then. Okay. Come back here, sir. Mr. Sir. There we go. I think now it'll work. Hi, buddy. You are our new head librarian, at least until someone comes to take over your job later when I put some statues in this world. If you need anything, I live across the lake. But have fun getting there with your lead, okay? Oh, he's so cute. I love him. I think this flower box is for the outside windows, but this one is just like a regular pot. What about the big one? Oh, definitely don't need 25 of those, but these are nice because you can put the double tall flowers in there, like roses and lilacs and stuff. So maybe we can put a couple of those here. Oh, it's cute. Maybe we can put another one up there. Oh my gosh. Um. <laughs> Everything is griefing me in here. Hello? I'm just going to break this. I'll replace something there for later. Oh my gosh. This is embarrassing. Mm. 
we'll do a chest over there and then let's put in maybe this one over here and we'll put some flowers in there so we'll do a peony and we've got lilac and then wait maybe we can change that one to like a rose bush because we do have the peony already downstairs as well that is cute i really like that and we'll grab this and place it right back where it was and i think for the most part that should be our reception area done is there anything else maybe we can just kind of stick these here i mean who's really gonna know I think this interior is pretty much done for now. I really, really like this place. I hope you guys have also really liked it. But we still have a couple of extra things to do. And of course, that's going to be putting on our roof. Or not our roof, sorry. The chimney onto the roof and also putting our dormer window in. So there is like a deep slate chimney block that we used on the starter house. But these are only one wide. And I actually want to make like a big like double wide chimney. So we're going to actually use campfires for this. There's a skeleton dying outside. <laughs> okay, we just need four of these campfires, but it's okay if we make a couple extra. We can use the other ones as decoration. But let's go up and let's put our chimney on the roof. A quick stop here for some leaves on the roof because that is my favorite thing about making a roof is putting leaves on it. You guys already know that about me. And we're gonna need another spruce sign here to hold these leaves back. That way it just looks a little bit more put together. And let's add a couple more flowers and leaves over here. No, not, not a sign. Leaves. Just leaves, no sign. Nope. <laughs> not a sign. I should move those so that way I don't accidentally place a sign again. Okay, and over here is where I actually want to make the chimney. So I'm just gonna build this up and we're gonna see how it looks. And if we have to adjust it after, that's fine. But I'm just using our deep slate variants. We've got some deep slate cobbled and the bricks and the tiles as well. In the last year or so, deep slate has really grown on me. I didn't really like it as much at first, but now I think I'm starting to become a deep slate girly. Although, I mean, it is a little bit difficult to make look good in a cottagecore build sometimes, but then there are just some builds where, like, you can really pull it off, you know? And it doesn't go with everything, of course, but sometimes I really, really like it. And right in here, we'll remove all of these planks, and then we're going to add our campfires. It doesn't really matter in which order they go. We'll just add them in, jump down. And there we go. Now, of course, for this to be a true froggy build, we're gonna first fix that so it's not as odd looking. And then, of course, we're gonna add some leaves on the chimney. That's one of my favorite parts about building a chimney is putting the leaves kind of surrounding it. I don't care if it doesn't make sense. It looks like vines. Maybe just a couple more. Yeah, I really like that. It's so springy. I love it. Okay, now out front here, I want to do a dormer window. And I think let's try a three wide window. We might have to expand that a little bit. Let's just see how it looks. 
Oh, whoops. It's probably actually going to look a little bit awkward now that I think about it. Might as well just expand it now. Now, I should probably add these kinds of dormer windows into my roofs more often, but sometimes I get really intimidated by them, especially if I plan on using the attic space right away. I don't know why or like what specifically is it that like intimidates me so much about this silly little window, but I hope that someone out there can understand how I feel. Although I wouldn't wish it on anyone, I don't, I don't want anyone to like be not as confident with their builds or anything. What am I looking for? What did I come in here for? I don't remember, honestly. Let's cover this up. We'll go up one more and that'll be fine. Then we'll just do a simple stair and slab kind of roof that we usually do and we'll connect it up to the main roof and then we won't worry about giving this its own kind of gradient we'll just kind of mesh it in with the other roof that's already here if that makes sense so like the magenta or sorry the pink terracotta and then the cherry wood I think that this can really make your builds look a lot more interesting though, even if I'm not that confident at doing them. So if you guys like this style window, let me know and I'll try to incorporate some more into my builds. And you know who's really good at dormer windows? Brooke. Brooke is so good at dormer windows. Like, hello? I don't know if anyone else gets like this, but I've learned so much from my friends and I'm so inspired by them. I genuinely really enjoy seeing the things that they create and like, I don't know, it just brings me so much happiness to like watch them grow as builders and as like entertainers and as YouTubers. I feel very lucky to have surrounded myself with people who bring genuine joy to my life. And actually I feel like, okay, not to be dramatic, but this little dormer window is bringing me joy as well. Oh, I'm going to need more pink terracotta. The terracotta today, we have used so much of it. Oh, I'm still using the wrong one. Whoops. All, all of that in here. And then I want to get some stripped cherry. Do I still have cherry? Oh, no. I thought I did though. Oh, yep, I do at the top. Luckily, we still do have some. All right, let's get this on and then we can check how it's looking from the front to see if we've got to change anything up before we do the rest of the decorating. And we'll just swap these two pieces out here. I think that'll look better. Yeah, there we go. Get a couple of leaves on here. I know I said before we decorate that we were going to check it out, but I'm pretty confident that it's going to look amazing. And we've got all of these beautiful leaves on here. All right, let's go down here and then pop into free cam. Oh, I do love it. Wait. Oh my God, no. I built it. It's off center. How is it off center? Oh no. Okay, I'm going to fix this really quickly off camera because you guys just saw me build it, but obviously there's four blocks on that side and six on the other. So I'll bring you back once this is fixed. Uh, give me just one minute. All right, here we are. It is fixed. It is now centered properly. It looks a lot better. I'm so glad that I noticed. There's me, hi. We're actually inside upstairs. That dormer on the roof has added so, so much to the roof. I genuinely love it so much. 
just gonna replace a couple of these leaves that I removed during the process. Um, that was a little bit embarrassing. I was very confident that that was gonna look amazing, but it was off center, which is just, we don't talk about it, okay? Anyways, let's see how it looks from the ground floor over here. Oh yeah, that is looking, well, ignoring the oak pillar there, that is looking amazing. Needs a little bit of detailing and I love the chimney, but we're getting there, we're almost done today. This has taken me literally two days because I actually had to stop recording the first day because waiting for the cows took so long. Let's just grab a couple of last minute supplies here and then we'll head back and we'll continue decorating and finishing up the outside of our house. Oh my gosh, and of course it's raining. Like, why is it raining now? It was just sunny and beautiful, and now it is like cloudy and yucky. I mean, I do like Minecraft rain, but it feels like this world is cursed. It is constantly raining when I'm trying to record. First things first, let's get in our windows. And here we can do that with just our glass panes. And actually, why don't we put the campfires up here? It'll make them a little bit different from our windows downstairs, but that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. Next up, I think if we have those cherry what's the word shutters yeah shutters i think if we make some of those shutters that would look really really nice with some of these windows will it go three high oh it does nice so let's make another set there we go oh my gosh beautiful and we can also add, hmm, maybe our big flower pot up here with a peony. There we go. Lots and lots of stuff added up here. These windows need a little bit of love as well, but I don't know if it's going to work out with these we can try because they've got like the weird trap doors and stuff that's kind of cute but yeah like i said there's a trap door up there so i don't think i like that at least we tried, that way we know. It's more important to know than not know, I think. Put some little flowers down here, like these pink daffodils. And then on these ones, I think we could do like some moss held back by some signs. And then we can add in some of our other flowers that we've gathered in our time in this world. Uh, just to be a little bit different, you know? Uh, 
and we'll just do a similar thing over here with our moss. Oh, and I also want to add some supports up there, holding up that roof on top. Gonna have to do that on all of these bits, and then maybe some spruce trapdoors as well, kind of like securing it to the roof. Let me just make some more spruce trapdoors. Oh my goodness, my backpack is such a mess. Even though I cleaned it earlier as well. And the wandering trader is still yapping after all of this time. Sir, please leave. You are not... You're not very cool. You stink bad. You smell... I don't want you in my world anymore, please. I've had so many of you to deal with today. Let's do a little bit of cleaning up out here. We can get rid of the carpenter's table. We'll not get rid of it, but we can bring it back home. And we'll pick up the backpack and we'll pick up the furnace as well. Oh my gosh, that is so cute actually, I love it. Let's work on a little front garden area here just to bring something interesting to the front of this place. And of course, we're going to need a pathway. Eventually, this will connect all the way around the lake, but I'm not going to worry too much about that today. That is what we have officially deemed as a future froggy problem. As long as it kind of just looks good enough, that's, well, good enough for me. Add some of these flowers here. We really like those ones. Add some peonies. Maybe we can just put some of the double tile flowers in here because they match the colors of this whole place. Maybe that's too many peonies. We'll add some of these sprouts as well. Get a couple of lanterns hidden around just for some extra light so nothing spawns out front. A couple of extra roses as well. Never hurt anybody. I think it's finally time to take down our oak plank scaffolding. No more blocking the entryway. The library is basically officially open for business after today, I think. Oh, the spore blossoms. Yes. Okay. Where am I going to put these? Maybe I can kind of put it over the entryway here, like there. And then maybe another one, maybe in the middle over here. Yeah, I think that'll be good. I do also still need to put the other supports on the other side of the roof. Oops. Didn't mean to do that, but here we go. All right, so we've got a spruce stair there and there, and then we get a trapdoor 
How did that, how did that just happen and knock me off? Are you joking? Am I a joke to you, Minecraft? We'll put down our final trap door. And of course, I've got to do this on the other side too, but I'll do that between episodes. Shh. You guys on the next live stream, just remind me to do it, okay? I promise I will. And honestly, I think that we're done. So let's take one last sleep and then we'll go through a tour of everything that we built today. Wow, look at the particles. There are so many. Oh my gosh, and there's a rainbow as well. This is actually the perfect end to this episode. What a gorgeous sight. Now we have this beautiful enchanting cottage, which we can just boat across the lake to. Anytime we need to go get some XP, mend our tools, trade with some villagers, or just simply do a little bit of enchanting. Now genuinely, this was a big effort. It was a lot outside of my comfort zone with like the gradients and stuff, and I did mess up a few times, but Overall, the vibe of this place and our new froggy librarian just is so magical. I absolutely love this. I love that we were able to bring the theme of the skelly farm from down below in here. And seeing that enchantment table reminds me that I did actually get a grindstone earlier. I made one. So that way we can add it up here and we can always go try again for our enchant table. So let's try to get looting on our sword just in case we need to get more leather. Looting too! No way! Okay. That was very lucky. Should we try the pickaxe as well? We'll see. What would we get on breaking three? Eh, I think we'll leave that one. But... Thank you guys so much for watching this episode. I had so much fun building in this world with you once again. I really, really hope you enjoyed this relaxing long play and let me know what you think of the build. And if you have any other ideas for this world, of course, feel free to let me know. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you have a good rest of your day.